Welcome to the 2019 MPSSAA Maryland High School Football Championships. Brought to you by your Baltimore area Toyota dealers, Wendy's, PBI Office Furniture, LifeBridge Health, and Value City Furniture. From beautiful Annapolis, Maryland, the capital of the state of Maryland, you are looking at the United States Naval Academy. And we find ourselves this afternoon in their stadium, Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bruce Cunningham, along with former Raven Wally Williams and longtime Wild Lake High School coach Doug Duvall and Mike Popovic on the sidelines. We're here to start the double huddle out, the first of two games today, the State 1A Championship with Dunbar taking on Catoctin. Wally, we'll start with you. Anybody, and you've been around Maryland High School football for about a decade now, everybody knows who Dunbar is. Look, Dunbar is back where they belong. You know, going for their 10th state championship. I mean, this program haven't even started until 1993. And to be in this situation, one of the perennials that are expected to be here every year, I think everybody's fired up to see Dunbar back here this year. Now, the other power in 1A in the state, of course, is Fort Hill. We've seen Dunbar and Fort Hill do battle many times. They got upset real bad by this Catoctin team. They certainly did. Everybody thought Fort Hill would be here except Catoctin, and they laid it on 41 nothing. So that's a little bit of a, a butt kicking up in the mountains, you know? As Omar said on the wire, you come at the king, you best not miss. Let's go downstairs to Mike Popovic. And we're here with Catoctin head coach Doug Williams. And coach, you've been doing this a long time, your 29th year. Uh, you were last here in 09, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it takes a, a special team to get here. Talk about this 2019 team. Oh, man, this, this team is very coachable. Um, come to practice, to work every day. Uh, nothing seems to bother them. Uh, we've fallen behind in one game this year. It didn't shake us. Uh, they're just a very coachable, uh, very competent team. Knowing that you beat a Fort Hill team who's been here a lot recently to get to the championship, uh, you have to come away feeling uh, almost as if that was a championship game. Uh, that was a very important game because uh, the year before they, they thumped us. So uh, that was a very big game. We only take one game at a time. Uh, that game's in the past now, and this is the game we need to focus on. And this Dunbar team also has been here a lot, the Dunbar-Fort Hill matchups. Talk about this 2019 Dunbar team and what you have to do to win this game. Well, obviously, they have the tradition. Uh, they've been here. They're very comfortable here. They're very confident here, and they're very athletic and very fast and well-coached. So we got to bring our A-game today. Coach, thank you so much. Best wishes. Yeah, thank you very much. Guys, back to you. We talk about these coaches, Doug, and, and particularly Dunbar. Uh, Lawrence Smith took over from the late Ben Eaton like a couple of weeks before the opening of the season, and what he's been able to do with this program over the years has been remarkable. Lawrence has done a good job. He really has, and he credits most of what he's done to Ben Eaton. Ben Eaton was probably one of the best men I ever met, just a wonderful guy. And Wally, he had to uh, sort of assume the throne and manage to keep it going after all these years. Look, there's only five players left in the last championship team, so really to keep the team focused and to get back with those five, I got that leadership there. I think it's going to pay great dividends for Dunbar today. Let's go down to Mike Popovic, who's standing by with the coach. And we're here with Dunbar head coach Lawrence Smith. And, Coach, this is an annual tradition between you and me. Now, this year it's Catoctin and not Fort Hill. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, a great matchup for today. Oh, yeah, great matchup. Powerhouse team, you know, real power football team. It's, you know, should be a good, job, good game. Talk about this 2019 team. I know you've been here quite a bit, but each team is unique and special. What is it about this team and what has made them successful to get to this point? Well, we're young. We grow up. I mean, we're full of sophomores and juniors. So we've grown up as each game, each game, each game, and then they really started peaking in the playoffs. So this is something that you want. I mean, I told folk I felt that we overachieved this year. So this is something that you want pushing into going into you know, the remaining years of these guys at Dunbar. Doug Duvall, you won five of these things at Wild Lake. What are the keys to victory today? Well, you, the thing that becomes important, Dunbar really has to contain Carson Sirica. He's a great player. Uh, he's put 40 points up, and, you know, part, a big part of that when they played. Uh, but Dunbar's 11th state championship, if they're going to be successful, Dunbar has to potent offense. They've got to control the clock and just let them play because you've got a lot of athletes on that Dunbar team. All right, settle down and relax, everybody. we got a great afternoon of football coming up. Dunbar versus Catoctin for the state 1A championship. We'll be back, and we'll have it for you live. Stick around, everybody. Toyota Thon is on. Time
Trying to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? Now, lease an adventure-ready RAV4 for just $219 a month. Or buy with low 1.9% APR financing. Or take $2,000 total cash allowance. Toyota Thon is on. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. The Ravens return to primetime on December 12th. One, two, three. It's Thursday night football against the New York Jets at 8.20 p.m. Touchdown! Find tickets at BaltimoreRavens.com slash tickets. I have a secret. There's such a thing as monsters. <laughs> Even if the monsters come, because the monsters will never win. No matter how scary they are, there will be someone right here with me. Introducing Wendy's 2 for 5. The only 2 for 5 with Wendy's fresh, never frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave's Single Spicy Chicken Sandwich, 10-piece crispy, or spicy nuggets. Pick any 2 for 5 bucks. Only at Wendy's. Nice one, but two. And we're back in Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium for the opening game of our doubleheader. First here, the state 1A championship. Dunbar will receive the kickoff from Catoctin. That would be Simon Grandos kicking. A pretty good kicker, 62 for 70. And he's hit uh, three out of five field goals and usually kicks the ball down low and hard. Right. And fake it. You're gonna line him back and <laughs> you don't see the fake kickoff. <laughs> now he walked up on side kick it. We did that before. Yeah. Now Catoctin in the white upset longtime power Fort Hill. Everybody looks forward to the Fort Hill Dunbiller championship game. It didn't happen this year. So the kickoff's gonna be taken at about the 15, heads for the middle of the field. Thank Looking you. for Hall found one. 30, 35 out to the 37, 38 yard line. So Dunbar with a healthy return to get things going in this ball game. Bruce, one of the things that Katak was going to have to do is very disciplined the way they were. They came down their lanes, they stayed in their lane, they went to the ball the and uh, did a nice job. Uh, the thing is, they're just not going to be used to seeing the kind of speed on the perimeter. You know, they just have not played anybody that will be able to run like Dunbar can. So Dunbar's first play, they are led by the standout sophomore quarterback, Karan Moore. You'll hear a lot more from him as the day goes on. Moore threw for four touchdown passes. Fumble. And as the ball is loose, and Catoctin says they have it, and they do. The fumble recovered by Mason Shank and the Catoctin ha, Cougars. They are go. in business. <laughs> I, I followed seven cars in this stadium. Bruce all had 44 written on the back of the car. I mean, these people up there love football. It's the first time in 10 years that they that they won it 10 years ago. To be back here, it's really exciting. Not how you want to start, Wally. Not how you want to start. I, I like this huddle right here. This is a jazzy huddle about to talk away. Yeah. But it's not the way you want to start. You, you, you want to come out and establish yourself. And we've seen fumbles at the first half of every game so far that we've been able to telecast. So, uh, you guys have been a little nervous here. Uh, great opportunity for Kentucky to come out here and establish there. Uh, really got a nice fan base here so they can have some momentum out here very early. Dunbar known as an offensive powerhouse. Now the ball's loose again. Uh, I, I think they got it back. They got it it back. Like it. Wally, you want to watch number 28? His name's Carson Sicari. He had 228 carries for 2,186 yards. Yes, yeah, Sicari is going to be a major story in this game today. This year alone, 2,145 yards, 35 touchdowns. That's him, number 28. We've seen these fumbles, you know, take over games here early on. You know, we talked about the nerves and yeah. being on a big stage here. Yeah, uh, they're all both nervous. teams have to get over that hurdle before they can come out and settle down and be themselves. Uh, he ranks third behind. There he Kansas. is, right there. That's Look at that. Gary. Look at that. He Spare ran running style keeps the legs moving, and that's a first down for Catoctin. Wally, 
We talked about him before the game. <laughs> First time we've seen him. Wow. Listen, yeah. you run for 230 plus yards and run over four hills. I want to see who this guy is. And this is the kind of running that is going to get your team in state playoffs right here. Great job of carrying defenders down. Wrapping that ball up too, Bruce, and protecting that so yeah, you see guys ripping it out. Great he's, job, great run. He's number three on the on the all-time running. He's behind Tavon Austin. Austin, of wow, course, the star that, with Denver, something, yeah. with Dunbar. Now he's with the Dallas Cowboys. We yeah. saw him play the other night. Played at West Virginia. One of Dunbar's storied runners. There's Sakari again. Look at this. He got good vision. It was Sakari. Yeah. That's across the 25. They're going to mark that at the 24. Bruce, if they can come out here and score first, that would be a big, big, big plus for them. Dunbar are not used to coming from behind, certainly. Psychologically, that would be an adjustment. Number eight, the kid Jake Barr, he can run, too. He's, he carries the ball about five, six times a game and uh, a little over 500 yards. And the quarterback had a really good year. Ryan Orr threw for 1,800 yards, so he can throw it. He's yeah. throwing it right Orr's now. Orr's looking to throw now. He's nice got a man. Out. The 20-yard line turns it upfield. They're going to mark him down at the 16. I think it's a first down. The pass uh, completed to uh, Snur Bronson. I mean, so far, the Cougars' offense is looking fresh. They're looking crisp. You know, as long as you don't put the ball on the ground and we haven't seen a penalty so far. We're almost yeah. <laughs> not good. Not yeah. good. We haven't seen a penalty so far. So staying fundamentally sound, guys, I think is the most important thing any team can bring to the table. And right now, Kentucky is looking very good with their attack. Well, they got to you know, that love relationship between them linemen and that tailback. He gives them, you know, brings them cookies and does all kinds of stuff. But they, they get off the football. They give it to the up back. Gain of about two. That'll bring up second and eight. Mike Popovic's on the sideline with us today and tonight. Mike, nothing fancy here, right? No, you know, this is a Fort Hill, but uh, it's pretty close, though. They don't run the wing tee, but this is Smash Mouth football. And I tell you what, these guys were out up until almost kickoff with the offensive uh, line coach going over a lot of different scenarios here, and it shows so far it's paying off for them. So that brings us into the Toyota RAV4 red zone. Looking into the end zone is Orr oh. and under through. Uh, Dunbar's linebacker back there, or cornerback, I should say, Jalen Hall made a dive at it, couldn't get there, and that'll bring up third down. Big down here for Dunbar. Well, they, they, Dunbar really needs to step up here. The other side of the coin is they're in uh, two-down territory. I don't think they have kicked some field goals. They've got a decent kicker, but they're down in here. They're going to try and come out with seven. Good shot of there, the Catoctin Cougars in the sideways huddle that Wally likes so much. I, I like the side. That's a little, you know, it's a little new. Well, you're an old center. I yeah. mean, centers are, or huddles are your life, right? Yeah, that's oh, right. Hold oh. up. Let's, let's get a creative design with this, man. Use use your space. They're good like lineman, Wally. Look at 71. That's very nice. Oh. Whoa. Wow. Threw it over there in the uh, direction of Travis Fields, the senior. And Fields got a little bump there from Darius Carr, and he didn't like that one bit. You know, guys getting acquainted out there. Yeah, yeah. Getting to say <laughs> nice hi. to meet you. <laughs> guys, so if he settles there and sits down, that's a completion on that play. He drifted yeah. into that coverage. Yeah. Number yeah. 24, Darius right. Carr. Catoctin will attempt the field goal. Simon Grandin. They're setting up on a 20-yard line. That'll be a 30-yard attempt. The I think field goal number 21. Simon Grandos Granados. attempts to, uh, or Granados rather. Granados, yeah. Attempts to uh, give Catoctin the early lead. Granados' kick is up. And it's good. How about that? The Catoctin Cougars draw first blood on a Dunbar turn. This, this is a, a, a bit of a surprise. Uh, I've never seen Catoctin play, so I... Uh, They'll be here in the state finals against, you know, the highly taunted and the highly taunted Dunbar school. I, uh, a little surprised they jump on the quick I leader. guess what we're seeing here is they're showing they're not intimidated. Here. At all. At all. Bring these big city boys on. Yeah. Let's see what's going on. We can handle them. We play solid football out there in Frederick County. Okay, let's let's go with it. <laughs> let's see what you got. City Mouse, I'm Country Mouse. <laughs> Time to show you. 
Well, Bruce, if you grow up in Catoctin and you just beat Fort Hill in football, you'd think you're living in heaven and anything after that. You know what? They're probably out looking for wallets and finding them all week and stuff oh, yeah. after, after yeah. that game. Well, they put a sign in their, in their weight room after the last year in the semifinals because Fort Hill beat them 55 to nothing. Off the Cougars, number 21, Simon Granados. Back to number 14, Tyree Sykes. So Dunbar will take their second kickoff of the day after Catoctin scores the field goal, 30-yard field goal to open up the scoring. This is the State 1A championship, and there's the kickoff. And again, taken at the 19-yard line, goes up 30. Finally going to be dropped at the, uh, let's call it the 38, and that's where Dunbar will go to work. So the Poets. Going for the school's uh, 11th state championship, Coach Lawrence Smith going for his seventh as a head coach there, and they find themselves trailing here in the first game. Timothy remember, Bolden, okay, is the kick returner. I remember Coach Smith kind of hanging out a little bit last year up here doing, and he was walking around like somebody stole his socks yeah. because they hadn't <laughs> been up here so He didn't know how to, he he didn't didn't know how to act. act. <laughs> oh. Nice tackle. And that was one of your big dudes who did that while he oh. got over there. I, I believe that that was that number 30, and his name is a Tony Traganawan. He, he kind of jerked the life out of him. Watch I this. Mean, you, you talk about Boom. getting acquainted right there. Watch this hit. Hello. Actually, yeah. let me repeat. That was Jacob McElvain. Big 71. Yes, sir. Well, uh, Traganawan, we'll call his name a lot. He's got 76 tackles and 10 of them for losses. So he gets off the ball, too. Man under through. Pass is incomplete. Did more. He had uh, Tyreek Sykes out there open and under through the pass. And he's a sophomore, guys. I guess, you know, the nerves are going to jump out. Wide, wide open game. play right there. Yeah. Wide open play to get some. Get, you want to get the ball out of your hand as quick as possible. We've seen that so far in every game. You don't have time to go five stuff. Get out as quick as possible and get it to your big time player's hands. Right. Can talk to D.C. guys. I was calling out pass right there. They, uh, they obviously saw something from their film study. They said they watched film all week long. I guess they didn't go to class. Good for Katana. <laughs> <laughs> That's a coach talking right there. Third and nine for Dunbar. They don't find themselves trailing much. They don't see a lot of third and nines either, and there's a flag. It'll, yeah, it won't hurt him, but it's delay the game. I tell you, it looks like Katoxin's a team that's been here Five before. I know Coach penalty. Smith guys said that you know, Dunbar's got a young team, but there's enough guys on this team that's been here before that uh, they they look like they've never been. It's kind of uh, kind of odd here on the sideline to see this. Yeah, Wally made the point, Mike, before the game, there's only five guys on the Dunbar roster that was on their last state championship team. That's how young this team is. Even though we have a legacy here of championships, you know, it's always a new experience. You have five guys there, but... They got a problem this team. here in the coverage. Hey, they better ring that first they were in a hurry. They're about to get burned to the right side. Ron Moore didn't get there. under pressure. You didn't, didn't see it, Coach. Oh, they're going to drop him. And again, getting back there and making the play, Jason, Jacob McIlvain. We're going to call his name a lot. Big number 51. Huge play for Catoctin. And Wally, they got to feel like they got some momentum right here now. I mean, look, at you had three receivers at the bottom there in the trips uh, formation. We had two guys out there covered it for Catoctin on that Dunbar offense. But... Two this kind three. of momentum, this kind of confidence, man. You have a turnover, you turn it into, seven, to, to a field goal, and now you have three and out here against this high-powered Dunbar offense. Well, you, you have to feel a lot of, of, of huge bit of confidence going against this it, Oh, look at the ball. Oh, look at the kick. It's Get away horrendous. from it. Get away from it. Look at the kick. Yeah, it takes a bit of a Dunbar bounce, but look at that. Katakin's going to get it on the 29-yard line. Katakin leads at 3-0. We'll be back with more from the State 1A Championship right after this from Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Toyota-thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? Get awesome end of the year savings on a Tacoma with up to 2,000 cash back. Or get 2,000 back on a 2020 Tundra. Or take a low 1.9% APR for 60 months. Toyota Thon is on. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Now we're back at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Bruce Cunningham, Coach Doug Duvall, Wally Williams, Mike Popovic bringing you the state 1A football championship. 
The Cougars of Catoctin so far is surprising Dunbar. They lead it 3-0. And look at this. There he goes. Sakari. He's something. He is something. Did you see that? <laughs> Sakari goes 28 yards for the touchdown as the Catoctin Cougars are shocking the world in the State 1A championship. I mean, this is so quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, if, if you turn the channel for a hot second, you missed this run. Uh, just get it to the line of scrimmage, line it up, and actually bring in the attack. Look at the blocking up front. Look at, look at the line, aggressive look run. Look at the Oh, man, he doesn't he hit that touch so until fast. five yards down the line. I mean, down the, in the field, right? The great job. Carson Sakari, everybody. Write the name Who down. did you see that? Wow. That's a big penalty. And the extra point is in no fact, that, should, that should be flagrant almost. What? What? Uh, there, yeah. I do see a flag. Right. Okay. That's uh, okay. A little, I, little anger spilling out, but there's probably a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are getting thoroughly acquainted so far in this first quarter. They are. And again, personal foul. Oh, that's the, the uh, that's the white hat that the crew chief Chris that Michael. This is the goal. We tried the down. penalty does go against Dunbar. I think they're lying. I, I didn't. I was talking to our official. I think they they may very well just line up and stuff it in for two. Yeah, they're bringing their offense back. Yeah, out. there's no there's no no explanation for hitting a kicker like that. In fact, sometimes it'd be an injection. Given the penalty, the Cougars will attempt the two point conversion. So the ball sitting on a two yard line here. I would think it's and, Sakari, and he gets in and it's a touchdown or, or the two point conversion is good. So Catoctin uh, taking on legendary Dunbar. They lead this game, game 11 to nothing. I think uh, the booth is maybe not Doug Duvall. OK, but a little I'm surprised. <laughs> a little I'm stunned sur I am. by the beginning of this game. And uh, they have taken over the stadium. OK, the intensity and the momentum is strictly on the Kentucky field on their sideline in their stadium the fans got their terrible towels out their white towels i mean they came in here for business they came in here to win a state championship today coach while all these kids playing the seniors have played together since they were eight years old doug duvall wants to watch coming up in this game katoctin first of all well we saw who sakari is ryan or is the other running back they'll see catch it and the guy they tried to throw in the corner travis field on defense, you got that big lineman, Tregano, who's the guy who really tries to um, do a lot of the stuff. We've seen some really good line play. Jake Baker, also defensive lineman. Uh, for Dunbar, you got Karan Moore, Deion Cruz Harris, Rashad Claiborne, all big playmakers. Games long, you're going to hear those games a lot as it comes up on defense. They got Carr Simpson and Ganey, and those guys can all fly cover territory. So the score is 10 to nothing, but it is early in this game. Dunbar will come back. Dunbar's got a lot of talent, but they're not used to playing from behind. The kickoff's going to be taken by Timothy Bolden. He crosses the 20, 25, gets across the 30 and pulled roughly to the ground, making the play for Catoctin and getting up and looking happy about it. That was, uh, I believe it was Andrew Ford. The thing Number, I love about yeah, this Catoctin team, they come off the field and the coaches are smacking them on the head and stuff. Everybody's fired up there. Yeah, they, they, Ryan they, Reed. Yeah, I'm right next to him. Ryan Reed, five foot nine. What's that look like down there, Mike? No, it, it, it's great. I mean, these guys came out with a quiet confidence uh, during pregame, but now they are fired up. The fans are here. You guys talked about it. it's a great start for them for sure. Well, uh, the, the uh, Siriki kid's dad coaches them, has coached them since they were little, and is on the staff at uh, Katakta. Oh, whoa. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. What are we seeing here? Can we believe our eyes? Catoctin. That's Jake Baker, who one of the guys you said to watch, Doug, and boy, oh boy, you talk about watch slamming do the that, door. Didn't you? He was he came through there. Um, now they have what they call it the old NFL thing, the lunch pail mentality. Mm -hmm. That's what those linemen are. They go to work every day. And the guy his dad Everybody loves the line, right? They just love those guys. And you know what? Like Wally said, watch out for the guys with single numbers. Watch right? out for the single number guys. Look, you have to put a guy who's lined up right in front of him on that last particular play, lined up in the center guard gap. Both guys from two different directions. Great play, great set. So Karan Moore, the heralded quarterback, finds a receiver and gets a block. Works his way up the sideline and gets out near the 40. It's going to be short of the first down, but that was Dion Cruz Harris. We're going to call his name a lot today. One of the more gifted guys on a gifted roster. And you can watch him just work this in 
Karan Moore sees him over there, and there's a bunch of white shirts, and watch what he does, guys. We go back to these single number guys out there. Anytime you see the number one or number two on the field, coach, we oh, got to yeah. corral oh, that yeah. guy. We cannot let him get more than two feet on the ground to get running. Well, that's going to be the hard part. It's going to be good for top that they jump that early because they're going to have their hands full here. So third and a long one for Dunbar, who's hoping desperately for something, anything, to go right. And this one's going to depend on the spot. I think they got it. Bruce Harris, yes, they did. First down. So that's that's going to give Dunbar a little bit of a jolt, and they need it because they got to be in shock right now. But they didn't blow them out for that first down surge either. Right. I mean, they you know it was a lot of after after down effort. You know, but when you're taking a look at Dunbar, you look at, at uh, like 56. You know, he he comes into the program here. He's a big boy. Uh, Derek Massey, Derek Massey mm -hmm. six foot two, 275. Moore trying to right side, completes it. That's a 40 gets a block past the 50 and down to around the 40 of Catoctin. It was complete to Darius Carr, and that's another first down for Dunbar. You can feel them getting their feet under him right well, now. Well, that's what Dunbar's got to do. They're going to play throw and catch on the perimeter. They are not going to make a living against that 5 2 inside. Just play old base 5 2, and, uh, you know, they're, they're manned up in coverage. And they're playing man, not zone, I think. We'll see in a little bit. Dunbar from the 41. Same thing. Carr, 40, 35, 30. Look at the speed. They push him out of bounds right at the 20 yard line. So that's a gain of 21 yards, and Dunbar's rolling now. You know, one thing I can look across the roster and tell that there's not really a size difference. Right. A significant size difference on both teams. So what we're talking about now. It's the number of athletes on the field, athletic ability, and just pure explosion. And that's what we see out of Dunbar. Well, I you get to see that big player guys and see that pure explosion. Well, the, the on that yeah. replay, Cruz Harris had a devastating block that really broke that play. And there's Cruz Harris right now. They faked it to him. Going to keep it himself. Yeah. Four, 15, 10. Nice. Nice nice it around. Great tackle there by uh, Travis Fields. He's a two-way player. And that keeps Dunbar perhaps out of the end zone. That's textbook. You don't draw it up any better than that. You can't teach it any better than that. That was a great open field tackle there. But the defense didn't, uh, I'm not sure, saw where the ball was going outside of him. Well, if we said early on, it just, it, you know, if they, if they can keep it outside, they're going to be a lot better off. So Dunbar from the 10. Cruz Harris with the handoff and runs into a white wall, white jerseys. Might have gained a yard. That'll bring up a second down. Well, I'm just looking down the roster here. You know, uh, big guy wide, big guy. They're pretty much matched up, but where the real difference takes it's about four or five inches on all those skill guys. You know, yes. so they're going to look for some matchups here in the corner of the end zone because you know the, the more kicking coach that can really throw the ball. Karan Moore. He's thrown for 2,000 yards. And so a sophomore, guys. Yeah, he better start throwing it right now. Ron Moore it. looking into the end there zone. Overthrew, oh. intercepted. And guess who got it? Oh. Sakari. Oh, and that was a saving tackle. Because they just made a tackle block downfield. Number 61 just depleted 54. Carson Sakari doing it all for Catoctin. Look at him right there on the screen. That's the guy. Gracious. And he's doing it with no, no gloves on and no wristband, which you can't stand. <laughs> There's the replay right here. Watch it. Just dial it in. He was on it the whole time. Receiver fell down. Look at that. I mean, great anticipation. Watch this kid 81 while, oh, they're not going to be on the screen. They had a safety come running over, and that cop shot still doesn't know where he Kenyon is. Kenyon Washington was the one that made the stop. Sakari made a run all the way, the way he's going. So from the 16, here's Katakta, and they lead it 11 0, and there's Sakari again. Might have got to the 20. They're going to mark him down at the 19. That'll bring up second and eight. Wow. Well, you know, we wanted to see this Sakari guy. Okay, we wanted to see what was all the hoopla about. And who is this guy that just beat up Fort Hill in the previous week? And we've gotten a huge dose just in our first quarter here. Uh, it's, we still have three minutes to go in the first I quarter. I know. 235 <laughs> yards, three touchdowns against Fort Hill. And now he has an interception today as well. To Man. Yeah. Goodness. It's actually it's kind of fun. From 19. <laughs> uh, you not nothing for him that time. Right. The right. maroon wall was waiting for him. So carry on, carry you know, back in the early 80s, Bruce, like 81 and 82, 
They had uh, two back-to-back -back seasons where you could go 10 and 0. It would be when we were in the old four teams made it to play. They were back-to-back -back 10 and 0 and didn't get to go. Uh, <laughs> I don't really, you know, there was a lot of push to expand his playoffs, and, and uh, we were fortunate, and the guy John Cox helped that happen. We went to eight teams, which allowed these guys to then come in in 2009 and win it. So Ryan Orr, the quarterback, looking at a third and eight. Dunbar showed blitz and couldn't stop. Stepped over the line inadvertently. I believe that was Keith Foster, the guilty party. Five yard so they'll mark off five. It will not give Catoctin a first down, though. But It'll it, be third and two. But it's third and two, and that's a whole lot better against Dunbar than third and eight. Because third and two is where these guys want to be. Third and eight is not their game. Catoctin in the white, Dunbar in the familiar maroon and gold. Catoctin up in the Camp David area, north of uh, Frederick. Dunbar, of course, East Baltimore, across the street from Johns Hopkins Hospital. Uh, number 18, Bruce. We'll get to see him. Sakari again. Sakari finding room. 35 talent. to the 40. They're going to mark him down at the 41. And Sakari is putting on a show for Katakta. I'm really impressed at the way he's carrying the ball. He holds the ball very tight, both hands, and he gets up in between his blockers. Look, he let his blockers get out in front of him. He doesn't try to do too much on his own, even though he has the speed to do it. But those gobble up yards in the middle to feel like that, Bruce. Get behind your big guys up front. Let them do the work, and you find your little nooks and crannies to make yardage. You know what? He can play at the University of Maryland in the slot. You get that kid the ball in the, in the open area and have to carry, he can play now. Doug Duvall recruiting. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's a carry again. Look at that. And Room got a blocker in front. Great vision. Almost gets to midfield. They're going to knock him out at the 49. <laughs> and he'll do this the whole game. And guys, if I might just add for yeah. uh, Wally and Coach, the inside toss, you don't see that often, but you've seen that a lot in this game, not on that play, but the previous play. Uh, that's uh, that's rare to see. Well, you know, it's a spinoff. They used to be, they run with it all, it used to be um, double wing kind of stuff. So that's uh, yeah, something to make a living at. So Catoctin looking at second and two now on their own 48-yard line. This game has been all Catoctin, much to the surprise of many people here. They're on balance while you didn't catch it. That's where the hole is. Carry again. One more and time. again, 40, 35. Look at that effort. They down him at the 30. He hits the ground. They're going to mark it at the 27. And then Catoctin continues to pour it on. Guys, I'm looking at last week's score. How do you beat Fort Hill 41 to nothing? I'm starting to see how they built Fort Hill. Oh, yeah. Look, when you come off the line of scrimmage with low pad level, get up on your block, you see everybody making their blocks and get it behind you. Running 77 right there. Run it down the field again. 77. Look, 74. I, I mean, look, you, 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 you have linemen that are running down free Richard running backs as well. This is what we call fundamental football here. They're not the biggest guys, but when you're fundamentally sound, you're still able to open up big holes. I for think your they're going to try and go vertical to the slot. So carry again. Dunbar kind of waiting on him right there. It's yeah. one of the shortest runs he had. Maybe a gain of a, a two yards. That'll bring up second or eight. But boy, we're impressed. The light has come on as far as that kid is concerned. <laughs> You know what you see a lot down here, guys, is Dunbar's defensive line, but they are standing up, so it makes it easier for Katoxin to block those guys. Well, you know, the one thing that they talked about when I talked to, uh, to Kerry's dad is, you know, they, got, they, they really make a big deal out of those linemen up there. We're Wally and I played for We're at the end of the quarter. Katoxin jumped out on Dunbar 11 to nothing. We'll be back with a second quarter right after this. Not only is Wilson used on more high school football fields than any other brand, the Ravens return to primetime on December 12th. One, two, three. It's Thursday night football against the New York Jets at 8.20 p.m. Touchdown! Find tickets at BaltimoreRavens.com slash tickets. Toyota-thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing? Wow. Get awesome end-of-the-year savings on a Tacoma with up to 2,000 cash back. Or get 2,000 back on a 2020 Tundra. Or take a low 1.9% APR for 60 months. Toyota-thon is on. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. 
Introducing Wendy's 2 for 5. The only 2 for 5 with Wendy's fresh, never frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave's Single Spicy Chicken Sandwich, 10-piece crispy, or spicy nuggets. Pick any 2 for 5 bucks. Only at Wendy's. At Value City Furniture, we search the world to bring you designer looks without the designer prices. With quality you might not expect, but definitely deserve. Like 100% feather cushions in so soft fabrics, dovetail drawers with metal glides, and solid wood tables with metal supports. That's what we call great furniture. Put us to the test. Shake, knock, feel our furniture. You'll see our designer looks will always outdo the competition. We are Value City Furniture, and we're going to be your new favorite furniture store. I have a secret. There's such a thing as monsters. <gasps> Even if the monsters come, I don't have to be afraid. Because the monsters will never win. No matter how scary they are, there will be someone right here with me. It's the end of the world. It's part one of a five-point crossover between Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, Black Lightning, and Batwoman. Starts this Sunday at 8 on the CW Baltimore. Crisis on Infinite Earths. The universe will never be the same. That could be the same after this. Throw He's got it in the There corner. you go. He's got it. Great He's throw. On the money. 26-yard touchdown. He had it at the other end of the field. Ryan Orr threw it. Yep. Jake Baker caught it. Katakton leading <laughs> this 17 to nothing. Uh, well, for Ryan Orr, 166 for 18, 36, and 17 touchdowns. I got that wrong, by the way. That was Travis Fields that caught that. That four and that mine looked pretty familiar, but Fields uh, with the touchdown. That's the same play they tried to run on the other side of the field, yes. guys. This time successful. What a throw. Exactly. Yeah, Beautiful throw. throw. I tell you. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> extra point is up and good. Uh, and suddenly, I, don't, I don't think it was good. I no, think they, it no they, was, they missed it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're sitting here 17 to nothing. None of us expected this. Let's go around the table. Mike, how surprised are you? Uh, yeah, certainly surprised because of the uh, la the uh, lack of athleticism compared to what Dunbar has and what they're going at with power. Wally, how surprised are you? I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm, I'm, I'm probably as stunned as Dunbar themselves. Okay, by just because we know how bad they want to get back. Okay, they stepped out, of, uh, went down right. a class, uh, came back. Okay, they wanted to get back and establish themselves and to get back to this stage and had this opportunity. And really to get to get it taken yeah. to him right now, a little little shot. Now the one guy at this table I don't think is all that surprised is Doug Duvall because you were a coach, and he's still got to play the game no matter what, right? Well, that's true. I know a little bit about these guys, but anytime you knock off Fort Hill, who had it would have been their 700th win for the Fort Hill program, and Fort Hill had just beat Randallstown 55 to 14 at the top ten got beat by 55 last year and they came back this is a team of destiny well they're showing some destiny so far there's a kickoff going it bounces at the 20 now it's going to be picked up and they're on him immediately wow. no return whatsoever for dunbar uh, that was a uh, darius Carr on the return Dunbar is looking stunned over there it's hard to get the brakes on man I mean, you talk about other intangibles in the game, and we use all kinds of cliches, momentum, intensity, all these things like that. But when you see it in front of you, when you see the stadium, you see a team coming in and punching another team in the mouth, uh, you have to say the Kentucky has come out here and just taken over Navy Stadium so far. Especially a team that's not used to being punched in the mouth, you know? Wow. Karan Moore, the quarterback, the sophomore, trying to get something going, and we got a whistle and we got a flag. Five-yard penalty. Hey, Bruce, if you ever get a chance, go up to Catoctin. They have a zoo up there that's gorgeous, and it's where President Eisenhower built this little retreat in Catoctin. Gorgeous. Yeah. Well, and Camp David is in the area, yeah. too, up there. Yeah. And, uh, and Cunningham Falls State Park. Is up there. No relation. Oh, after uh, Bruce uh, Cunningham. Yeah, I, I mean, think, hey, I there you go. You might have to get some residual I'll just say this. That. I'll just say this. There's no Wally Williams Park up there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not one up there. There you go. That's the problem for. There we go. Okay, breaks the tackle. Man. 30. 
35 Dunbar showing who they are right there. That's their bread and butter. That's what we're used to seeing Dunbar do. That was Kenyon Washington on the carry. And that's going to be a first down. Well, you can't lose sight of what you're here for and what got you. Right. I, I think Dunbar is very familiar with their offense, very familiar with their athletes. Yeah, they've been punched in the mouth a little bit. They're staggering. But they get back to what they do best. Give it to their athletes. Let them make plays. Try to get some on the sure. board and see what happens. Well, remember what Doug said the other night, uh, eating an elephant, it's one bite at a time, right? Yep. <laughs> you got 17 <laughs> you go. points to make up, so. It reminds me of that uh, fight that time when Tyson got dropped early in the game. They said, no, he's staggered. He can't come back. It's Mike Tyson. Karan Moore on the run, and he's sacked. Oh, oh and wait a minute. It's, it's intercepted. It is intercepted. It's intercepted. Oh, yeah. What a yeah. play. Wow. What a play. Coming down with the ball for Catoctin was Mason Shank. You're looking at him right there on your screen. What a tumultuous turn of events for Dunbar. Yeah, there's Here's a flag the replay. On the field here, guys. Yeah, there's a flag the as well. Line flag on the coach Karan Moore the trying field. to escape, but coming up, uh, Jake Baker got a hold of him from behind, and then, as we said, Mason Shank comes up with the football. Let's see what the flag's about. It's a five-yard penalty, Bruce, I think. Or I think it's five. It's on the sideline. It wasn't a warning because the coach in jubilation ran out on the field. So Yeah, he knew it. Yeah. Our referee in the booth uh, again today is Bob Cannon. Bob, uh, refs hate to throw that flag, don't they? Yeah, but, they, but this one right here, it's the first one, so it's only warning. So since it's a state championship oh. game, I doubt you'll see it again. Oh, huh? Good, good, good. I want to jump out of the booth. <laughs> <laughs> so Catoctin from the 21 yard line. It is all going the Cougars way here in the state 1A championship. They finally realized it was unbalanced when he took uh, in. Not, I don't know if that's up before, but they're starting to adjust to it by running that guy with him. Now what they'll do is send him across and then they'll come back weak side with a trap or something like that. A power off the backside. Sakari uh, Sakari carried at that time. Here again, the dramatic uh, interception. He, he's Try not to take the sack, trying to get away. They don't let him. Well, this is what happened. I mean, Throws it going down, this, and look at that. This is what happened. You have a young player, yeah. okay, at a position of leadership, a quarterback position. When you get in trouble like that, you just get the ball out of there. You live to play for another down right there. Trying to do too much, make a play happen for an interception. Wow. Talk about ninth graders, Wally. Going to the air, can't find anybody, and he's going to be dropped in the backfield. No escape in that time. In to make the play for Dunbar, one of your big guys, Wally, big number 75, Timothy Walker. Timothy Walker, he's just been Walker, in the middle of everything the entire time. This is what you're going to find your real estate. Getting behind your big line right here. It's been working so far. <laughs> okay, so follow your guys. Get behind those guys. Let them open holes. Now, Wally was an O-lineman. Mike Popovic was a quarterback. Mike, I know you're liking that sideways huddle too, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's stylish. stylish. Yeah. It's stylish, man. It is. He hit to carry a little screen or something like that. From the 23, so carry and you're not, nothing. You're not making a living in there. Not not third Dunbar ball. with the good read coming up, uh, making the play. Yeah, we called his name Five earlier on offense. That's Deion Cruz Harris wearing that number one for Dunbar, and that's going to bring up fourth down. So Wally, Dunbar's got to be feeling good at least about this defensive well, stand. Well, this here. is the best defensive stand so far. Uh, they've been able to stop right there even after the big turnover. Not advance the ball any closer. I don't think they're in field goal range right here, Coach. So this is a, a no. full-down opportunity here. I just wasn't wild with their calls in this series. You know what I mean? When you got them down there, you can take some shots because you're on the 23. Lay that baby up. Let him run underneath of it. So fourth and 11. Here he goes right there. Throw it. He's got him. Done. Ooh, Did not come out. down inbounds. Out. Yep, That's what they need to do. A little bit too hard. Yeah. That was Travis Fields over there on the receiving end, and Dunbar will take over. But like I said before, guys, on a play like that on the out and up, you've got to convert that route. If the defensive back keeps backing up, you've got to convert that and cut that off and get you in front yeah. of him. That's a that's you know that's an adjustment. I don't think they've seen that kind of defensive back coverage. That's the deal. They're usually that move gets them free. It's different. A little different caliber mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. different, different deal. You're yep. exactly right. Yep. You're reading that on the fly, that conversion route if you if you could do it. So Catoctin did not convert the fourth down. Dunbar does take over. They're at their own 23-yard line. They trail this game 17 to nothing with 9.07 left in the first half. I think we could truthfully say no one expected this. Dunbar now has to try to climb out of a 17-point hole. Low snap. Moore comes up with it. Covered really well. 
really well. It, the, the pass was completed to Keontae Garland, but he saw nothing but white jerseys. You know, we understand the athletic presence that Dunbar has on, on that side of the ball, but I, I think they're going to have to be a lot more creative in their offensive approach. Just to dump pass out to the outside. You know, if you're going to have your strong running game, get your guys in there, let them run the ball. A little dink dunk pass, I think we've seen so far. that this Kentucky team defensively is fundamentally sound. You're going to have a swarm around the ball. So running out there and not having blockers is not going to be beneficial to advancing. Khalil and Bailey, 13, he can it, fly. There's a swing there pass. Again. And a nice read for Catoctin. <laughs> they got guys making plays left and right. That right there was Cook or Connor Cook. And he almost had six himself right there. Defending for the Cougars, Connor Cook, he, he's been Connor one of those guys that every time replay. something happens, he's right there. And I'll th oh, look at the, you think it's a little <laughs> hold on 51? I think he was holding 51. Holy cow. That was uh, Tyreek Starrett with a little gamesmanship there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, right. Hey, man, no call, no foul. Hey, you can't let your arm go out straight. That's the problem. I don't know if I can teach that technique, but it's no call. Third and 11 for Dunbar. Karan Moore in the pocket. Looks no. downfield. Intercepted. From the 28-yard line, and it's that guy again, Carson Sicari. He's everywhere. He does everything. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 what else do you want to see? Wow. What else? He, he can go home. He's done. I, I think, He's done. But Bruce, I think that I think that was Snur. Yeah, time. it was Snur. It was yeah. Snur. Number okay. 18. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I just saw Man. the eight. Yeah. Man. Man. Look at the break that well, you can't see it here, but in the game, he rolled up yeah. in front of that. Yeah. Thanks for that all the way. Yeah, I mean, this this pass was, was was out there. Mike, you contested it. This pass was kind of telegraphed. Yes, sir. And was. you saw this this interception coming about five yards as soon as he left his hand. Absolutely. And again, that's a young quarterback we're talking about yeah. back there in Catoctin making the most of it. Bronson Snur with the interception. The extra point is up. Wow. And good. And the extra point is good. With 8.14 to go in the first half, Catoctin leading Dunbar, shocking Dunbar, 24 to nothing. Let's see what happens next. Stick around. You're a Ravens fan through and through, and now's your chance to show your pride in a big way. Get the M&T Bank Ravens debit card of your choice and limited edition Bluetooth speaker with any new M&T personal checking account. Rush to any M&T Bank branch. You're a Ravens fan through and through. And now's your chance to show your pride with the M&T Bank Ravens debit card of your choice. Get it with any new personal checking account. Just pick one of our accounts with the features that are most important to you. Rush to any M&T Bank branch today. and Bully Ray clash before their street fight at Final Battle this week on Ring of Honor Wrestling. Tonight at 10 on the CW Baltimore. Welcome back to Annapolis. You're looking at the uh, Maryland State House, as we mentioned at the top, uh, the U.S. Capitol during the War of 1812. So, uh, and Catoctin, the Cougars from Frederick County. Shocking. The Dunbar Poets from Baltimore City, 24 to nothing. We're not even halfway through the second quarter. It hasn't been trick play. No. It hasn't been anything spectacular. It's just been straight fundamental football on both sides of this. Point. That's a hard Short hard kick name. going to be taken at the 35. Room to run. Going to be knocked out shy of the 45. They're marking him down at the 41. So Dunbar, that's where they will go. One, the one thing that Dunbar has had a lot of work out to their, their kickoff receiving game yeah. has had a lot yeah. of time today. Yeah. This is amazing. It's a beautiful place to play, isn't it, Bruce? It really is. It's the only well, game played in, in, in a Memorial Stadium. Yeah, taking a look at the Dunbar sideline, Coach Lawrence Smith and company trying to get something going. They look a little stunned, too, Wally. They do. They, I'm, I'm sure they have not been in this position down by this score in quite some time. They lost one game this year. It was the first game of the season to Cross City rival Mervo. After that, they started rolling. And now they find themselves in a 24-point hole. Karan Moore harassed again. Now he's going to keep it. That's Look what at he this. 50-45. They're going to run him out of bounds at the Catoctin 40. 
That's going to be a gain of about 17 yards and a first down, Dunbar Poets. Do you know why he's so fast, Bruce? Do you know why he's so fast? Why is that? He's got on Jackson shoes. Down. That's right. That's right. Lamar Jackson, the Ravens quarterback, uh, sent Karan Moore his shoes, and he's wearing them right there. He's got them spatted, but those are... Uh, those are uh, Lamar Jackson shoes. They those may, shoes uh, got to have some yards left in them. They, that's for yeah, sure. they may be a little bit big on them. That's a problem. From the 40 now, Moore goes upstairs. Got it again. You can't hang him up like that against Catoctin. Coming up and making the interception, yeah. Travis Fields. And it is all going Catoctin's way. They ran over one of his teammates, too. Might have shook out number three there on the play. That's what it takes. We're going to run over our teammates who get the interception. I want, it, I, I want it more. I want it more. But, again, just an ill-advised pass in the coverage. You have two guys sitting right there in the same place. Just an ill-advised pass. And, uh, yeah. That was Eli Fry that turned went down. He, oh, man. Of all the weird ways to get hurt in a football game, yeah. that one would be right yeah. on the list. Uh, well, Eli had five interceptions this year. He's number two after Snur, Are you, and he's tied with Fields for interceptions. So from the 20 now, Catoctin, and nothing doing that time. Going back for Dunbar and reading the play, ended up in the backfield. John Thomas drops him for a loss. On the carry, I really like Thomas. He comes off the ball hard. He stays low. He battles. You know, he's a, he, uh, Deion Cruz is their leading tackler, though, with 101 tackles this year. Yeah, Cruz Harris is a great player, offense and defense, and he's been one of their leaders on this team. And he's one of the guys that's going to have to rally these guys. Something's got to get done, and it's got to come from the roster. The, the, the single number crew. Yep. They're going to have to get it together and try to make something happen for that number offense. Well, I pro Wally now they're really in trips and uh, they got a little room to run here to the right. There you go. He needs one block. He's got it. That's up from go. the 20, crosses the 20. Great play though by Dunbar. Yeah, they're going to get out around uh, the 25 the yard line. That, of course, was Sakari once again. On the, again, you'll see Baker. Jake Baker made a nice block on that play. I've noticed that, Mike, that all their receivers get downfield and block. Yeah, they sure do. That really yeah, helps, though. Well, I think one of the things they're going to do here sooner or later, knowing them, they're going to hit a little inside trap to Baker, and he can carry the mail, too. I mean, he's got 500 and some yards running the ball. He hadn't carried it today, and he's got seven touchdowns. So, you know, he, he's a force. This, uh, I yeah, love that, him that, in this formation. There. there you go. Yeah, that's a wing tee right there <laughs> from the old, old days. And look at this. Oh, I was looking at the offensive lineman <laughs> yeah, downfield. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the quarterback, too. <laughs> that, of course, was uh, that was Sakari once again, and that's going to bring up fourth down. And they stop him. And, you know, we, we, we see a lot of this in, in Baltimore football now. You talk about the rise of, of, of Lamar Jackson in the quarterback position, where we see old-style offenses. Yeah. Coach. A lot of the T formations, a lot of the fullback, the old school fullback in the backfield. I mean, those things are probably becoming a premium now because of the success that they've had in the NFL as well. George Young used to run that at City a gazillion years ago. George, one of the great high school football coaches. Oh, from it, it, okay, it yep, hit he the uh, it yep. hit the Catoctin player. It's going to go out of yep. bounds at third half. George Young gave uh, Bill Belichick his first job. He did, and George Young ran that full team as well as anybody could ever run it. They had a G series out of it and all kinds. What a great human being George Young was. Belichick was the guy, Wally, they'd bring him in on Sunday nights to break down the film all night long. You know, the 19, 20-year-old guy, that guy. Oh, yeah. That was Bill Belichick. Hey, hey, kid, what you got there? With the Colts. That's yep. right. That's yep. right. And, hey, you know, the way this game go, the way this game goes, I mean, it's like bell bottoms. It, it just comes back. It comes right back. So, wow. That's what we see now today in our games with these kids. They run the same offense. I, I bet that Doug Duvall was rocking ago. the bell bottoms up in Woodstock. Oh, there's no yeah, doubt. I had a pair of little multicolored babies. Yeah, yeah, they the, the plant babies. No doubt. Yeah. From the 46, <laughs> here's Dunbar do. Moore with a handoff. We got a flag. Crosses the 50, crosses the 45. Unfortunately, we from the point of Do the we foul. see a flag? It was... I thought I saw a flag, but a lot of the Dunbar kids are wearing gold shoes. There's no flag on that play. That's just quick feet. Guys, they tried to run. They ran that play a few series ago, if I'm not mistaken. Very successful on it, too. I, I think anytime you're able to get their guards in space, we talk about these guys not being that big, but more athletic. Get your guards in space behind, get your running backs in front of them. It, it serves well for both teams. Uh oh, they got the right guard moving. Yep. There's a flag that time. Yep, yep. He before the game, I'm pulling. I'm pulling. Cover Dead for ball. Me. False start. Uh -uh. Offense. Too soon. Five yard penalty. 
still first down. But of course, the crew chief, Chris Michaels. There's a meritocracy for the officials, too. They earn their way into these games. Five yard penalty assessed against Wally and I were just looking at each other. Does that have anything to do with money, Wally? Meritocracy. Hey, That kind of new money, it, like whatever they call it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, somebody, somebody get paid in that? <laughs> All right. Now, here's the problem. This is the problem for Katopka unless they adjust to it, to the right side. And they are in the blitz. It's out there by yeah. Oh! Tipped in. It's going to be taken out of the air and still in play. 50-45. Pulling it out of the air for Dunbar. Making a play there was Kenyon Washington. And he turned disaster into something not too bad. Pass was flag got a man down. I'm afraid it's Sirikki that's down. Is that Sirikki over there? Looks like Sikari, I mean. 20, 20, the right there, though. Five, 26. Right. We have an official timeout. Well, Sikari is, of course, number 28. And we see a 26 over there. So it's not Sikari. It is uh, Cole Bowen. You, know, you hate to see anybody hurt. Bowen, one of the standouts, one of the ones to watch. Right, that was Bowen, and you see he's up. I'll tell you, sometimes you need some luck on your side right there, and we just yeah. saw that uh, this dump hard play. Oh, yeah, that could have been that could have been liked out for Dunbar right there. But um, oh, we also we also have a flag here. Cole Bowen had 54 um, tackles. You know, these guys met once before, and Dunbar beat them. Uh, I was looking in uh, in the annals. Um, Let's see what the call is. Did we get the signal? Bob, did you catch what that was, Bob Cannon? Yeah, it appears to be a blind side block. Okay. Uh, CountySportsZone.com provides you with every score for every game, every day for every Maryland public high school. County Sports Zone, also the official digital partner for the MPSSAA, providing the brackets for every sport, updated scores and schedules for all MPSSA playoff contests. That's CountySportsZone.com. Got that clip coming back. Yep, we got a block in the back. It is complete, though, to Tyreek Sykes. Man, Dunbar, everything's going wrong. Everything's yeah. going wrong. It's everything's going wrong. You know, we have a legal band. procedure, sure. block in the back. Now we have a clip here. We had three straight penalties by this Dunbar offense right here. They're moving back way quicker than they're going forward. And it's unusual, Doug, because Smitty, Lawrence Smith offense. teams usually very disciplined. This is unusual for a Dunbar squad. It is, it is. You know, they spend a lot of time working on Lawrence. He's a great coach, inherited a great system from the great Ben Eaton. Uh, Bob Wade out of there. I mean, just really good coaches, you know. And, and sometimes good coaches, you, you don't need so much to go on the field. And even with the players, I mean, they're good football players. Sometimes you see what happened to Leganor. just happens. That looks like a first and 34 to me. Yeah. I think that's correct. That's a long way to uh, go. There's, there's no play call in the book for that. <laughs> uh, I have to say, I look back, and Katakton beat Dunbar in 2009 in the semifinal. Huh. They beat Dunbar before. I'm I'll sure. They, uh, old Chuck was reminding me of that, too. Yeah, huh? yeah. There's the pass. Got him open at the 40. Puts they, the move on. Look at this. He's still going, and it cuts back inside at the 30. And we got a flag. That's coming back too. Boy, oh boy, Dunbar. This is this is hard to watch. Tyreek Sykes there Look, had a big gainer, but they're bringing it back. I see two flags. Flags over there on the 48 yard line and on the uh, 45 yard on the other side. Um, yeah, you I, had that wide out. He came back and he just blocked him right in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Ten yard penalty. The game, so um, first they probably won't have that on film. You know, Bruce, I saw the same thing happen up at Ligonor. Ligonor, Ligonor played Mervo. And in the second half, I think Murvo had, yeah. I, I think it, I think it was 190 yards and penalties in the second half. And my only thought is they need to change the officials that they use in for doing their games because evidently they don't call the penalties because the kids are used to doing it. This this isn't a normal event for Dunbar. From the 42, Karan Moore tucks it in. He's going to go upfield with it. He cuts inside to the 40. Nice oh. tackle right there. And did he fumble it? Are they saying he was down? I think he was down. Well, coming up and making one of the most beautiful tackles you're ever going to see is uh, Bronson Snur. 
It was awfully close, guys. I, I saw that right in front of me. It could go either way, but I think Dunbar Maybe is going to retain it. Let's see what happens. Oh, I almost. He keeps that ball loose, though. Woo! Keep that it in top. Like, oh, never never, like take, never quarter, take it over top of his head like that. That's an excellent tackle right there. Yeah, I, I think no, that's the second time yeah. Crumb's made a great tackle oh, in the yeah. open field like that. The replay clearly showed he, he pulled it back in, so that was Karan Moore making a big play there. And at uh, second now and nine, they made up a lot of yardage on this possession with that play. Okay. Here's Moore looking downfield, got his man. He has it to the 10, the 5, okay. touchdown, 41 yards. Karan Moore goes to Darius Carr, and Dunbar serves notice that they're trying to get back in this game. Mike Popovic, you played quarterback. That was a beautiful throw. Uh, it certainly was, and that's a play that Dunbar scored on uh, two years ago in this uh, game, but uh, in front of a lot of different uh, contacted defensive players, but uh, the linebacker tried to uh, make a play on it, got it in behind him, and then he went by the rest of the defensive backs in that area. And really just a disastrous series of plays for far. He was the receiver that got right. two blocks in mm -hmm. the back penalties, and he was the one that got him back there, but going for two here. Play. Oh, wow. And that now. was Cruz Harris. Deion Cruz Harris runs it in, and they do get the two point conversion. So Dunbar's on the board 24 to 8, and the hole got a little less deep right there, Wally. Well, we see the explosion. Okay, we see the ability these guys to make plays and make it over. We see the speed. And eight points right here. Uh, only two scores back, Bruce. <laughs> we know they have the explosion right. to make that happen. So uh, that 24-point lead is not out of reach right now. Watch well, that early on. They're going to need all the points for the end of this game. <laughs> you know, uh, Dunbar can just broke. Uh, Deion Cruz Harris had uh, 94 carries for a little over 1,000 yards. So he puts his hands on it. It's going to be a problem. Dunbar's got a long history of great two-way players, and, and Cruz Harris is another one of them. He never leaves the field. Uh, stay tuned for the Wendy's halftime show uh, the four of us we will go over what you've seen we've got highlights for you we'll preview today's second game which you can uh, see at seven o'clock and then uh, we'll also interview the uh, new superintendent of Baltimore City Schools which I'm looking forward to because we got a Baltimore City School plan for another state championship I'm interested to see what she has to say it's all coming up on the Wendy's halftime report here at the state 1A championship Bruce Cunningham Wally Williams coach Doug Duvall Mike Popovic bringing you the action well, you were eating a Baconator when I came in today. That's right, man. And I can't wait to get another one after we leave here tonight. <laughs> got From little, the 30. Got a little wedge in the middle. Nothing fancy. Just nope. went straight up field with it. That is People Jake still Baker. pumping around a little bit there. Don't anybody do anything dumb. You know, watch the chippiness in this game. We saw this earlier. And it's only going to start to get chippier as we continue to go about this thing. You saw a lot of guys getting acquainted. Yeah. A lot of games yeah. going on yeah. after the whistle there, <laughs> which I absolutely love. Yep. Okay, but watch the chippiness as this thing goes. Wally, you, you, know, fight. It, you know it's going to be noisy down in there. Oh, between yeah. them yes. I, yes. Yes. I thought they were exchanging addresses for yeah. Christmas cards. All, <laughs> all the noise won't be from the pad down in the trenches there. Let's see who wins this purple and uh, white battle across the line. <laughs> Gets oxygen from their They're 41, and there's, there he is again, Sakari. And not as much room to run that time. Dunbar got over there and covered that. Sakari on the carry. That's going to be a gain of, uh, gain of maybe two. The ball call him one, one, second and nine. Uh, they've almost got to run some kind of counter thing with their slot or whatever because Dunbar's speed, they can close. Uh, the carry's just done a marvelous job at running the ball. He's been very impressive. But you're, I just don't think you're going to be able to make a living on sweep against the Dunbar team once they get settled in and going. But, you know, he picked up two yards. That's a good first down play. I'm thinking they're going to hit some fullback stuff here or some kind of little... Uh, uh, Shovel pass or screen or something. There you go. There it is. But great play. Uh, great play on defense there for Dunbar. Coming up, getting a big old hand up there was Joshua Carr. And broke that one up. That'll bring up third down. The coach called the play. Well, Josh has jo Joshua's car has been around a little bit too, you know. I'm looking here on the on my sheet, and he's got 50-some tackle ball for yeah. defensive end. Uh yeah. And also, he's got 20 catches for 350 yards, so he's quite an athlete. And one, of those, four. one of those five guys that was on Dunbar's last state championship. We want to we want to reemphasize how young this Dunbar team is. He's a tall drink of water, that's for sure. When he gets his hands up, that's a problem. 
But that's a problem too, right? Secure. Gary again. He's got the block he needs. He's to the Gilbert 30. No. Great open field tackle there for Dunbar. Might have stopped the touchdown. Devontae Ayers. But again, we sing the praises of Carson Sakari. The kid is putting on a show. Here's the replay. Sakari following his blocks again. Right up the middle right there. Looking for the real estate. Open field running. Great vision right there. Just an excellent job of making it happen, which he has been doing it from the from really the blow of the whistle at, at the kickoff. So uh, just a great opportunity right there to put his team in position. And I think the first time they went four wide uh, in this game, guys. What? Yes. What's that? They do a little bit of stuff. There's the fullback uh, stuff Doug was talking yeah, about. I thought they'd hit that a little earlier. Quick you hand know, off to Jake Baker. But they got some. They got some uh, pretty rough characters inside there. You know, I mean, you're not blowing them off the ball. Well, we just saw a little chippiness right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Baker wanted a penalty called. You know, uh, Mike, when we talk about Sakari, he doesn't really pass the eyeball test. He's not a really impressive physical specimen, is he? No, but uh, you know what? That's where you never take your uh, opponent for granted. Right. Like <laughs> never judge a book by a cover. No, nope, absolutely you not. You can't tell if that horse will plow if you hook it to him, you know? He does a good job. Leave it to Coach for that one. That's the truth. No, he I haven't heard his signature phrase yet. Oh, that one? Oh, there you go. Yeah. When the ball's loose yeah. on the ground, the Doug Look Duvall classic. Ball. Get on that Ball like a start. hobo on Off a ham it. sandwich. Yeah. 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 Sure, that's it. You gotta, there come a time for it. <sighs> Not too many penalties by uh, Katakton so no. far. This is well, you, it's impressive. That's, that's, yeah, second one. Yeah. Second. Brings it back to the 29. I saw earlier with the kid who could have got called. He put both hands up in the air and just sort of butt blocked the guy. You know, <laughs> then he could have got called for, for uh, clipping if he wasn't careful. He's got him. Oh, just overthrew him a little bit, uh, but that good coverage here for Dunbar. That was Jalen Hall on the coverage, and you had to be careful the way you threw that one. I, I don't think Katakton is real disappointed with that. No, no. Now they're in a tough situation here. They're going to be in fourth down. You know, and this is one of those plays. This is one of those plays. You have third down and long right here. So they get him in a fourth down situation with no yardage right here to make it a fourth and long and possibly get the ball back. With about a minute left, yeah, we've seen that offense time. explosion. Sure. They can cut this thing down to eight points. Just don't do something crazy here. It's third down. You got plenty of time. Don't throw it into somebody else's hands. Got, got, it. That got him in the time. middle. Oh my God. Holy got a flag, oh. guys, on this play. We got a flag, but that's completed, and that was gorgeous to Travis Fields wow. or to Travis Fields. The Catoctin players stating their their case. I see some hands up in the air there. Beautiful throw. Ooh. You can't ask for a better throw than that. Bob, what do you think that call was? He's reacting like it's a good thing. Personal foul. Defense. Oh, 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 stands. oh, oh man. Wow. Well, that's a big answer, guys, to Dunbar's score there. You thought maybe a momentum shift a little bit, but not yeah. anymore. Ryan Orr to Travis Fields. You're looking at it again. You cannot throw a football better than that. No, you can't. Wow. And Dunbar's got to be wondering what has hit us. That's uh, Orr's 20th touchdown pass this year. They're going to try and block it off his left side here, but I, up, it's not pretty, but it goes through. It's up and it's good, and we have got a one-sided, let's go ahead and use the B word, blowout going on here. Here's another look at the touchdown. Gorgeous throw. The way Mike Popovic used to throw him for Calvert Hall. <laughs> Maybe not that beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, did we scrimmage against each other? I remember we, a quarterback we, yeah. throw that ball like crazy. Is that you? That well, was you. We did 96 and 97, a great tune-up for us, oh, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. You were it was we played against you and then we went on to win the state championship. We credited that to you. Very yeah. good. Yep. I, no, I remember my first completion against you guys, 783 key pass. I'll never forget that. <laughs> 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 Doug, it's interesting that the Calvert Hall guy said it was a great tune up for us and you guys went and won the state championship. So yeah, yeah good yeah. tune up. Yeah, well, I had a kid, Tony Jackson, ended up being all ACC strong safety yeah. and a uh, bunch of other guys could really play during that time, you know? Some really Renato good guys. So we talked and about to tee it up and kick it off with a minute 15 left in the half, 31 to 8. If you say you saw this coming and you're oh, not from yeah. Frederick County, oh. you're, you're talking through your hat, my friend. Oh, 
everybody surprised. Wally, who was? Oh, I didn't see something like this coming. But uh, no, this this football team. You know, when you get smacked 55 to nothing, and you put your nose to the grindstone for a whole year, and you got some guys coming back, and you get graced with a kid like the carry that's once in a decade running back, maybe once in a lifetime coaching wise. There's the kickoff. It's going to bounce and be taken. That's the 23. Trouble. He's That's got trouble. room. He's got room. He could go. That's trouble. Oh, that is Tyreek Sykes. Yep. And they're oh. going to mark him out of bounds. But he's, Sykes had his eyes on that end zone, man. That's that explosion. That's that explosion we talked you about. You got an onside <laughs> kick and drop that thing down in there with a minute left to go. Don't hang it in the air and let him get that momentum going. I, I was almost surprised he fielded it. I thought he'd let it go out of bounds for a penalty. It was a very casual looking deal. Look how casual it's kind of going there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's time to go. Okay, let me get up here. Let's go with it. Let's run. Let's show that speed. Well, that's the difference. That's right? just Running athletic ability, right? That's just yeah. speed and athleticism right there, guys. Tyreek Sykes. From the 35, here's Dunbar. The handoff goes to Darius Carr. Carr gets across the 30. The, the clock running, though. They better make sure they Yeah, got we're inside a minute to play here. here. Don't be surprised to see another pass across the middle like we saw last time, guys. So Dunbar is at the 28-yard line. I'm up right now. They got the, oh, the safeties running across. They got one high. They read that. And he breaks. He's, he's still on his feet, crosses the 20. That is complete to Khalil Bailey for Dunbar. But the problem is the clock's well, the clock stopped now. 37 seconds to go. Time time I think, I think they had Dunbar two. calls the timeout. Each team had three, two actually, seconds. guys. Yeah. Timeout, Dunbar. So if Dunbar gets in the end zone here before halftime, it's not quite as one sided, but do we have a new game? I think you do. Okay. I think you do. I I think we have seen both styles of play right now. We know that Dunbar has been punched in the mouth, but they have too many guys over there to have explosive individual talent. So with that, if you don't keep scoring on this team, okay, they're never really out of reach. If they get seven, maybe eight, okay, going into halftime. I think they come out in, in, uh, with the ball here in the second half. Uh, I think really I think, make something happen. I think what we're saying here is it looks as if Katakton has played to capacity. Dunbar clearly hasn't. Is that what we're saying? That's what we're saying. Yeah. And uh, don't forget, you know, <laughs> self-inflicted wounds have not helped them. Not at all. Well, the other side of the coin, too. They're not in the end zone yet, and there's less than 50 seconds to go on the clock. I can't see the clock from here. but we got one-on-one -on -one down here, guys. It's, I think the clock's going to run out on this play. I think it's over. Ron Moore takes the snap. There's the handle. Oh. Ball's loose. Ball's and, still loose. And he's picked he, up. He's going to go. No. no. Oh. down from behind coming up and making the tackle for Dunbar a heads up play Dante Lee otherwise we might have seen another one uh, I, I, we, we've seen it all we, we've seen <laughs> it, it seems like every situation here Dante just little, in this first half Dante a little shook up on that wow. Wow. I thought he was just look angry at, at the fumble but that was uh, Deion Cruz Harris that gave it up and uh they had an eye on another touchdown you know that kid 81 he took a shot he is a tough hombre Wow. And yeah, what they've got, 6'4", six, 6'3", six, across that line, Coach? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's Connor Cook, 81. Yeah, I, I think his emotions may be a little you think? hurt more so than you think. I, I'm confused now. by the clock, though. We saw it go all the way down to one. Now there's 28 seconds up there. Now, are they timing the timeout? I, I don't know. It like that was the time for the timeout, it, and it went back it into was, a play clock. It was 37 before the play started, guys. So Correct. 37 to 28 is what we have down here. Well, I, it says 28 seconds, so I guess we're going to go with that because the offense is coming on the field. And 28's on the scoreboard. Okay. They'll take a knee. They'll take a knee. No oh, yeah. question, they'll take a knee. Got to. I had offensive coordinator. Right, and Wally. he does take the knee, as you predicted. And uh, Dunbar is going to go back into the locker room and try and figure out where it all went wrong. Catoctin, it's pretty simple for them. They're going to keep the hammer down. Uh, keep it going. Keep it going. This works out so far. These fans... These towels that they have out here, I mean, it is a whiteout over here on the sideline as well. And they have totally taken over Navy Stadium. I'm stunned. Uh, I think we're all stunned <laughs> at this point. Not a whole lot else we can say other than Catoctin has taken it to Dunbar. They've punched him in the mouth. And Dunbar's back on its heels. Other than watch out second half, Bruce. 
You're looking down the barrel of a double barrel shotgun. Oh, yeah. The first barrel missed you, but there's a second barrel there. Let's go downstairs uh, to our Mike Popovic with the uh, the coach from Catoctin who's got to be pretty thrilled right about now. Well, and Coach, that's a huge play there at the end of the first half. Oh, big play. Turnovers have been huge for us, man. This game's far from being over. Playing dumb bar, man. We got to come out ready to go. I was going to say, though, you really couldn't have drawn it up any better for the first half the way you guys came out and scored 31 points. Uh, well, here again, turnovers in field position got the score, so uh, this game's far from being over. Coach, best wishes in the second half. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Mike. Hey. Far from being over. Hey. I love that Co country hey. accent. Co Coach Dunk, he knows. He, okay. He, he, he is not. He doesn't care about what that score is. Okay. Just by that conversation, you know they're going to come out here in the second half and just keep it going. Keep the intensity going and keep the foot on the gas. Doug, I want to hit you with the same thing. Wally heard it in his voice. You heard it in his voice, too. He's by no means comfortable with this lead. You know, Doug Wee has been around a long time. He played Dunbar before, and he knows what they're capable of doing. They've just been struggling. The key will be if they can come back in the second half and just get it going a little bit, they'll be fine. All right, the score at halftime, and a surprising score it is. 31-8, to Catoctin over Dunbar. We'll be back with a Wendy's halftime show. Stick around, everybody. we got a lot more for you. Introducing Wendy's two for five. The only two for five with Wendy's fresh, never frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave Single Spicy Chicken Sandwich, 10-piece crispy, or spicy nuggets. Pick any two for five bucks. Only at Wendy's. Not one, but two. Toyota Thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Ooh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? Get awesome end-of-the-year savings on a Tacoma with up to 2,000 cash back. Or get 2,000 back on a 2020 Tundra. Or take a low 1.9% APR for 60 months. Toyota Thon is on. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Orton, board-certified plastic surgeon and host of The Doctors. If you've tried every fad diet and extreme workout and still struggle with stubborn body fat, then it's time you call Sotobello. I've personally performed thousands of body fat removal procedures, and the results I've seen achieved by the highly skilled experts at Sotobello are truly outstanding. Sotobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently, so eliminate fat on your stomach, thighs, and back. Don't wait to schedule your free no-obligation consultation now. With Sotobello, you can permanently remove stubborn fat and in just one visit. Plus, find out how to get one area free with our best deal of the year. Hurry, this is a limited-time exclusive offer. Call 888-273-9096 or go to Sonobello.com. It was an accident. Then the other guy's insurance company calls and says, we don't need to hire lawyers. We can work it out ourselves. If you get in an accident, call Levinus, Tolzman, and Hamilton. I'll tell them to talk to my lawyer. Call Levinus, Tolzman, and Hamilton. It's a tough world. You need a tough lawyer. And we're back at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium, and we're quite surprised by this. Catoctin leading Dunbar 31 to 8. Bruce Cunningham, Wally Williams, Doug Duvall, Mike Popovic bringing you the state 1A championship. And when I talk about how surprised we are, guys, no disrespect intended to Catoctin. We're just not used to seeing Dunbar get smacked around like this in a state championship game. They're really playing. I don't care who uh, Catoctin played. They, they can play the way you know there's only so many things you can do and they're doing them. And there's you know? the highlights and it's all going wrong for Dunbar. Yeah, it seems yeah. like everything Catoctin does is right. Everything Dunbar does is wrong. And look at this. And, look, there's and there's the, the stud right there. That is uh, Carson Sakari and he's been the star of this show. The he Carson Sakari has come in and just pretty much laid down the hammer. Well, not even just offensively, there, yeah? but defense, defensively as well. And when you see one player come in and have the impact on a team like we just saw here in the first really 24 minutes of this game. I mean, not only are, is Dunbar stunned, but everybody is stunned. I think even the Kentucky fans, even though they know he's the guy. Oh, yeah. But yeah. he, I mean, this is a game of a lifetime here well, on this stage. Ryan Orr's put on a show, too, a quarterback. Yeah, we're watching some of these uh, touchdowns that he's throwing. And, of course, uh, Karan Moore there is, is struggling today. But that was gorgeous right there. And that got Dunbar on the board. 
And up to this point, that is their only touchdown. There's the two-point conversion with uh, Cruz Harris. But how do they answer? Like that. Well, that's why Coach Williams actually said what he said, and you hear that skepticism by saying, like, look, I know what these Dunbar guys can do in this thing. Well, not you, you know, you're looking down the barrel rear, and you're looking at kids like uh, Cruz Harris. You can fly, Karan Moore, Tyree Sykes, Jeremiah White, Christian Sprakes, all those guys. That's a 400-meter relay team. Now, it, it, the, the stats aren't that one-sided. They're not that one-sided at all. You're talking about Kentucky has 63 total yards passing, 137 rushing, 200 yards of total offense. Dunbar, 91 passing, 82 rushing. 173 yards to the offense. Coach is not that big of a difference. Doesn't look like a 17-yard difference, does it? <laughs> does no, it that's where those 17 yards took place. <laughs> hey, field uh, position. Right. These live game Turnovers. statistics, courtesy of your stack through LLC, in-game statistics done right. And we certainly appreciate that. The Wendy's halftime show will continue. Stick around. We've got more for you from Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. You're a Ravens fan through and through. And now's your chance to show your pride in a big way. Get the M&T Bank Ravens debit card of your choice and limited edition Bluetooth speaker with any new M&T personal checking account. Rush to any M&T Bank branch today. Toyota Thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? Now, lease an adventure-ready RAV4 for just $219 a month. Or buy with low 1.9% APR financing. Or take $2,000 total cash allowance. Toyota Thon is on. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. I have a secret. There's such a thing as monsters. Monsters come. I don't have to be afraid. Because the monsters will never win. No matter how scary they are, there will be someone right here with me. Meet your newest family member. It's social with a seat for everyone. Smart with adjustable power everything. Connected to keep you in the loop. It's durable, too, with top grain leather on a wooden metal frame. And it spoils you with everything you need right within reach. Introducing designer looks, now with high-tech moves, only from America's reclining experts. We are Value City Furniture, and we're going to be your new favorite. You're a Ravens fan through and through. And now's your chance to show your pride with the M&T Bank Ravens debit card of your choice. Get it with any new personal checking account. Just pick one of our accounts with the features that are most important to you. Rush to any M&T Bank branch today. Welcome back to the Wendy's Halftime Show. We are at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. And joining us here at halftime, the Honorable Dr. Sonia Santelisas, the new superintendent of Baltimore City Schools. I don't think you mind me still calling you new. You haven't been on the job that long. No, just three and a half years. <laughs> That's been three and a half years? Three and a half years, yeah. It oh went quickly. It's well, uh, Dunbar is, of course, representing Baltimore City. Absolutely. It's not going all that well. Do you still have faith? I still have faith. A lot of ball left to play. But, yes, I, I have had some moments where I've clutched my heart a bit. But we're going to try to get back in it. Well, that's the only way you can look at that's it. That's right. Uh, your job is not an easy one, Baltimore City. You are under the spotlight or under the microscope when you run the city schools. And uh, you seem to be holding your own. You seem to be a battler. And that's kind of what that job takes, isn't it? Well, it is. And I will say, um, our young people, like the Dunbar Poets, uh, make it easy in terms of that sense because it's really all for them, and now you see why I love football so much. <laughs> in recent years, uh, things have happened in the city like lights going in. The kids in the city get to experience Friday night football, things like that. It seems to me that that's such an enriching thing for these kids. It really, really is, and we know um, just firsthand every day how much athletics means to our young people, so the investments that are part Partners are making our athletic director Tiffany Bird I say is the best in the state and we really in our focus on student wholeness are really recognizing the importance of athletics in the lives of our young people so it's great coach uh, Duvall next door wanted me to make sure we mentioned Tiffany Bird he, he's been in this all his life and he said he can't believe the job that she's doing and also the athletic director at Dunbar coach Johnson oh no coach Johnson uh, 
I, I tell Tiffany Bird all the time um, that she takes straw and spins it into gold. And But she really, she's committed to our young people. I think our program is as strong as it is uh, because of a lot of her work and the work, frankly, of our athletic, uh, our athletic directors and coaches across the city. You personally, the job can get off, the seat can get awfully hot. And, and, I, and I said a little while ago, you know, you got to have some fighter in you. But you've got to also have optimism. You've got to believe that there's a rainbow in the future. And it seems to me, I just met you, but I can see it in your face. You're that kind of person, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I shouldn't be sitting in the seat if I don't see the optimism. And I will tell you, on the rough days, all I have to do is go to a school, whether it's a kindergarten class or a high school pep rally, um, and know uh, that there's hope. There's hope in our city. And this generation of young people um, is a generation I'm proud to serve. Well, that's great. Well said. We're happy to have you in position and continued success to you. Thank you, and thank you for all you all do to really uplift the power of youth athletics. Well, hey, it's a lot of fun, first of all, and if we can cover a ball game, we're always up for that. In the city schools, they always equip themselves well. There are gentlemen and ladies on the field. You can feel very proud about that. And I am proud, and thank you for saying that, because conduct and integrity matter. Hey, I'm around them a lot. I'm not making them up. I see it all the time. That's fabulous. That's Tanya, thanks very much. Godspeed to you. Thank you. It's great to be here. We'll be back with more of the Wendy's Halftime Show right after to this. Value City Furniture introduces the best sleep experience ever. Dream Mattress Studio. Come in and our sleep experts will help you find your perfect mattress match at the new Dream Mattress Studio. Now open only at Value City Furniture. Toyota Thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? Get awesome end-of-the-year savings on a Tacoma with up to 2,000 cash back. Or get 2,000 back on a 2020 Tundra. Or take a low 1.9% APR for 60 months. toyota -thon is on. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. What's your body going to look like this January 1st? Have you had the same New Year's resolution over and over again? Well, this year, make it happen. Lose the fat permanently with Soto Bella. Last year, I was making resolutions to go to the gym, eat right. This year, I'm living my resolution, thanks to Sono Bello. Sono Bello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently and with minimal downtime on your stomach, hips and thighs, back, and more. Schedule your free, no-obligation consultation. Plus, get your January 1st body started now and find out how to get one area free. So this January 1st, are you going to be starting your resolution or living it? I have never been able to fit in a size 2. 2020 is my year. Call 1-888-257-9232 or go to sonobello.com. Save big this holiday season at Value City Furniture. Shop our Dream Mattress Studio today for up to $500 off mattresses. Like this Dream Refresh Queen mattress, now just $7.99 after $500 savings. Or enjoy special financing only at Value City Furniture. This is the 2019 MBSSAA Maryland High School Football Championships. Brought to you by your Baltimore area Toyota dealers, Wendy's, PBI Office Furniture, Lightbridge Health, and Value City Furniture. We're back at Navy <clears throat> Marine Corps Memorial Stadium as the Wendy's halftime show continues. Beautiful sunset down here in Annapolis. Always a pretty town. You're looking at the Dunbar side of the field and the Dunbar marching poets leaving the field as we're getting ready to start the second half. I'm Bruce Cunningham along with Coach Doug Duvall, former Raven Wally Williams. Mike Popovic is down on the field awaiting the teams to come back on. And guys, uh, we beat the dead horse until it's barely even there anymore, but we're shocked. No one expected 31-8, De to eight, especially shocked. with Katoctin on top. De definitely shocked. Uh, you know, you, you expect the game to be competitive. I mean, these are two of the best teams here in 1A, and you expect, you know, quality football at this level. I mean, we see it every year in state championship games. But for a powerhouse yes. like Dunbar, okay, to be hit in the mouth with these punches, 
A uh, little bit shocking. A little bit shocking. But we also understand that they have enough firepower over there. Oh, yeah. To turn around very quickly. And, Doug Duvall, with all your games that you've coached, uh, no lead is really safe, right? Even in the state championship. No, it's not when you play. You know, like, as I said earlier, the Dunbar, you got to really, really be careful. You know, Bruce, it, I didn't get a chance to... I tell you what, hold that thought. Let's go down to the field right now. Uh, Mike uh, Popovic and Coach Lawrence Smith. All right, Coach, it looks like you guys were starting to get a little bit of momentum late in that first half, but that turnover, tough tough one for you. Yeah, you know, that was our fault. You know, we bad call, but, you know, we just got to do what we got to do to try to get back into this game. You know, the, the youth is taking over, but, you know, we like I told them, leave it all on the field, go 100% and do what they got to do this half. Well, I was going to say about the second half adjustments, what more specifically do you need to do as well? Oh, we just got to we try to stop the run. That was the first thing, and then we found something with that. But people got to lock down on the uh, on the in the secondary and do what they got to do and don't you know allow the big play. All right, coach. Best wishes in the second half. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, back to you. Hey, Doug, what else, what else could he say right there? Well, I think what he's got to do is go in and have a little come-to-Jesus meeting and say, listen, well, we're going to go out there and we're going to fight Catoctin to the very last minute of the game. We're not going to fight each other because we're behind because I saw a little bit of that taking place. And uh, so, you know, they can come out and they can do it. There's no question. And our double header after the conclusion of this game, we're going to have a half-hour break. We will have a... Uh, High School Sports Special hosted by my colleague Morgan Adsit. And then at 7, our second game, the 2A championship. It's the final of the four. The Wolverines of Potomac, not unlike Catoctin, a mild surprise getting to this level. And Middletown, who we see a lot at the state championship level. That one will get underway right around 7 o'clock. And uh, we'll be back with more of the state uh, 1A championship right after this. Look at that sunset in Annapolis here at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Absolutely beautiful as we play the State 1A Championship. I want to go downstairs to Mike Popovic again. I'm watching uh, Catoctin come out, and that's a very spirited group right now. They got to, I guess, kind of keep within themselves, but there's an awful lot of spirit going on down there right now. Well, there certainly is a lot of confidence, and look, they got out to a fast start. I think they're going to need to continue to do that here in the second half, not give Dunbar any opening here. You guys have touched upon it. They have a lot of athleticism and explosiveness, and they're able to score uh, in a heartbeat. So they need to limit that. I think the big thing is, especially when they're out in space, they've got to make that initial tackle, not give up any additional yards. That's going to be key for Catoctin's defense in the second half. And Coach Doug Duvall, the last thing Catoctin wants to do is hit cruise control at this point, right? Well, they've got to look out for cruise, but the cruise is on the Dunbar <laughs> side. And they won't. You can see them coming out. They were, they're, I guess there's 44 kids dressed or something like that. They're all doing jumping jacks at the same time. That was that was impressive. It just shows how, how they are. They play as a team. I think, now there's no question about Sakari doing a great job, but I think both sides of the line that the nod has to go to Catoctin's offense and defensive line and and kids like 81 you know yes just I agree just really playing just really playing and Connors. as you mentioned that uh, coach so, Doug Williams uh, 29 years on the job and 29 years is probably all pointed to this team back deep, uh, he's probably Cougars dreamed about this team for 29 years yeah yeah and he's had some good teams though he, he was back in the day of the 80s when he had or he was on the staff when they had back-to-back uh, -back seasons went in 10 and they won it in uh in 2009 they beat Dunbar so yeah that's 10 years but that's not long in a, in a coaching lifetime 10 years hey guys there's something here on the sideline I didn't mean to uh, interrupt that's but uh, one of their players is in a sling with uh, ice here on the contacted sidelines there's something to look for in terms of one of the starters maybe not being out there it's here not 81 is it now we can see him down there he's right in front of the scores table we'll try to identify him he's got his jersey off kickoff taken at the 18 yard line that's a and problem room to run look at this crosses the 40 and that's a good start for Catoctin. The returner there was uh, Bronson Snur. And so here come the Cougars from the 41-yard line. Bruce, I was shaving this morning and realized why there's so many fumbles. 
They got to use brand new football, so they're not used to using. Yeah, yeah. They're using and brand new football, and a lot of times it's not the football they use. We used to go out and buy a football a week ahead of time and practice with it and sneak it in the game. Uh, Wally Williams, you played center in the NFL. Those new footballs a problem? Oh yeah, they're, they're a big problem. Big problem. You like to have your kickers actually massage the footballs down before the game and get them nice and nice and soft, so you can handle them. So those hard footballs like that, that's on the perimeter. Whole nights are very hard to handle. And Sakari, no uh, surprise at all that they would go to Sakari him to start the, the half, and he's going to gain about three, take it out the initial five, five, bring up second and five, seven. Yeah, they're yeah, saying down here you should have cut it up earlier, would have had uh, a few more yards. You know, one one point that coach made, which I think is a great football point, when Katakna came out here in, in the second half, the simple thing with them on the sideline doing jumping jacks together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just and team football. Right? That's team and sports. And that's the way they play the game right now. You have a team that is out there playing fin fundamentally uh, uh, sound football, coach, and they buy into the concept. Those things are just underwritten rules in that game that you just have to have. And to give, to give again, they try the middle of the line, and Dunbar fills the hole in a hurry. That's Sakari again, a short gain. That's going to bring up third and long. They're going to have to put that ball in the air, Bruce. You look up, Dunbar's in a 6-3. You know what I mean? So you, you, they can play those athletes out in space, but you got to get the two-man personnel out there and just make them, make them pull out of that a little bit or do some stuff on the perimeter. You're not, you're not going to get 6-3. So third down, and we'll call it six. For Catoctin, who surprisingly lead this one 31 to 8 here early in the third quarter. So that has been an obvious game plan move right there to come to stop out this one to have that defense right there to the front to stop the city. Fake the handoff play action. He's got he's gonna keep it, turns it upfield 50 and crosses first the 50 and just enough for the first down. That's very good. Ryan Orr, a quarterback. And you know what? We talked an awful lot about Sakari, but Ryan Orr is having a pretty good day too. Banner deck. Well, you, you know, you, you see the defensive change. We saw Dunbar come out and make their halftime adjustment. The adjustment is to put more men in the box. Six man front coach, a six three defense to stop that. Well, what does that do when you put yourself in that situation? Mm -hmm. You need one stopping offense, a uh, defense. It opens up ability to make the quarterback scramble, get in open lanes, and maybe get the ball over the top to a big play down the field. So let's see if they can attack this Dunbar secondary. Catoctin having a, uh, a little problem lining up, but they do line up and uh, nothing. Team of about two. Uh, the injured player for Catoctin, according to uh, Mike Popovic, is uh, Ryan Reed, a senior. Uh, offensive and defensive lineman. He, they've got him wrapped up there on the sideline. Like he eight, eight pretty good player. They had, he got injured too in, uh, I forget, I'm trying to think back so many names and play, but he got injured in one of the games coming into this and they had to sub for him, so it could be a reoccurring injury. From the 45, he's throwing it. Or back to throw. What a catch. That's unbelievable. What a catch. Wow. <laughs> Right in front of you guys. That's unbelievable. That is Eli Fry. It was right in front of you, Mike. Tell me about it. Excellent execution there. And uh, the wide receiver had to adjust himself to hook onto the ball. The defensive back's right on him. So that took a lot of uh, concentration, to say the least. He just got in uh, in bounds before uh, being pushed out to the sidelines. Well, well, what you have, I mean, Mike, and I'm sure you know this as a quarterback, what you have when you have a run stuffing defense. You got man to man on the outside. Absolutely. Okay, and, and you want to get your big play guys and get the ball in their hands. That's what every quarterback wants is man to man on the perimeter and get the ball into their big play receivers. Easy Great job. Read. Yes. Little slant would be really trouble for them. On the 20, they try the middle. Gain of about four. And again, that is to carry. And guys, it's early in the second half, but it appears Dunbar is paying close attention mm -hmm. to Sakari. They have to. They have to. In order to give them a shot, they know they had to take the run out of the equation. The run is so detrimental to a team when you're behind. It does a lot of different things. It takes away from you morally. Most importantly, it eats up the clock. He's so sound. Let him run the ball. He's so sound technically. There's the play. It is. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Dunbar, they're tough up front. They're tough. Well, I think they're tired of seeing 28 I'm run up and down the field. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you got to stop somebody. That's a good place Depending to start, I guess. That's it. You have to stop there. If you're going to stop, take something away. You have to take that run game out of the crease. And that's one thing that we know when we see teams no and we see the, the Belichick teams. He's a master at that. You know he's going to take one thing away from your team, so you have to perfect other areas to beat 
the Patriots. I think he's got to come out of there naked, you know, fake that, do something a yes. little different just to throw him off. Because when you look down and look at that, look at that's that, a look lot that of line. players oh, inside Yes, there. a lot Ryan of Ryan Orr there. going over to the right side and that's overthrowing. It. That's a hard pass from there. That is. That was uh, uh, Travis Fields was the intended receiver. Two Dunbar defenders over there. A little yeah. bit dangerous. Yeah. And that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think and I think they're in that slot formation. They'd be better in type of a double slant. And you bring that kid across the wide out would then be trailing. You might be able to hit that or do that and brings a carry out of the backfield on a little swing pattern. They're not going to let you run out. the ball. They're yeah. not going to let them run the ball anymore. Not, that's look like six man, six yeah, man box, six guys in between the tackles. Right. Got got some some well, yeah, you want to yeah. bet on a fake? Simon Granados in to attempt a 32 yard field goal. He kicked one earlier. It's up and not even close. Yeah. Yeah, he's been so better he taken and turned away that time, and I guess that's a break for Dunbar. This has been their most successful defensive series so far, where Kentucky didn't come out with any points. So Dunbar taking the run out of the game plan worked effective so far. 31 to 8, Kentucky leads Dunbar in the state 1A championship. We'll be back with the rest of the second half from Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Right after this, stick around. Introducing Wendy's two for five. The only two for five with Wendy's fresh, never frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave's single spicy chicken sandwich, 10 piece crispy or spicy nuggets. Pick any two for five bucks. Only at Wendy's. It's a hit and run. My neck is killing me. My car is wrecked and my friend is hurting too. If you get in an accident, call Avinas, Tolzman and Hamilton. Thanks. Now I know I called the right lawyer. Call Avinas, Tolzman and Hamilton. It's a tough world. You need a tough lawyer. I have a secret. There's such a thing as monsters. Even if the monsters come, I don't have to be afraid. Because the monsters will never win. No matter how scary they are, there will be someone right here with me. It's a CW December that keeps on giving. Merry Christmas, everyone! With all new specials. The Christmas Caroler Challenge. And all your favorites all month long. Watch out! <laughs> Happy holidays! Spend the holidays with the CW. Weeknights at 8 on the CW Baltimore. Mark Haskins and Bully Ray clash before their street fight at Final Battle. This week on Ring of Honor Wrestling. Tonight at 10 on the CW Baltimore. And we're back at the state 1A championship. We're in the third quarter. Dunbar with the football after Catoctin missed the field goal. Karan Got him Moore. in the middle. He can get Turn it upfield. Boy, he's an athlete. And he's going to be brought down from behind. The tackle there for Catoctin. Credit that to Jake Baker. And that's a gain of uh, eight. We'll call it second and two. Don't buy a little speed up here. Yeah, a little hurry up. Little, up no huddle, you know, coming off of their best defensive series. Ron Moore, very athletic for a sophomore, had a great season. And there's the handoff right into the teeth of that Catoctin line and in the tackle, in on the tackle for Catoctin. We called his name a couple of times in the first half. Uh, Jacob McElvain having a really big game for Catoctin. That's a big old boy, too. He moves he's seeing number 51. Oh, yeah. yeah, look at that. He's Shedding top. blockers, making tackles. He's wreaking havoc in there, Wally. Yeah, we, we, we talk about, I've been saying this the whole time, about guys just being in a position and maintaining leverage. Well, and Katakin has been doing that. Just team the time. Look, he look at that. Intercepted. Look at that. He caught it. Was it 51? I think it was 61. Did he caught Six, now he didn't hang on to it. That's 81. Did not hang um, on to it. He's a player, too. Came down. That's, uh, that's Connor Cook. Yeah, he's yeah, he's dying. Dying. It's gonna cause him a punt anyway. They're gonna have to punt it out of there. Like he, 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 he couldn't hang on. Oh, he's dying. <laughs> I, I wonder, did they call that a, a fumble, a, a, a interception? Yeah, that's what I was wondering, guys. So here's what happened. If you had an interception, then a fumble, then it would be first down for the offense. But if it's incomplete, it's gonna be fourth. Okay. Okay. Let's see what he has here. It's fourth. Yep. Okay. So really, a break for Dunbar. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. Yes, right. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, with the field is. position, you're right. I mean, they're not coming to block it, which uh, sort of puzzles me. Oh. oh. That infield fly rule snap, but 
He yeah. gets it, and now mm. it takes a big old Dunbar roll. And it's going to be down at the 37-yard uh, line. All things considered, Dunbar dodged a bullet right there. Good stuff. Well, a couple different deals. Any high school player, there's going to be at Gilman High School on 12-12 and Annapolis High School on 12-11, they'll have a recruiting fair. Gilman on 12-12 would be from 9 to 12, and Annapolis is from 6 to 8 in the evening, and there'll be at least 30 or 40 colleges there. If you are a senior or junior football player, you should be there. What goes on there? Uh, all the colleges will come in. I New Gilman's got 25 different colleges coming in. Some of them will be, you know, the one double A's in Division II. Sure. Uh, but they'll come in, and, and even for seniors, might get picked, but it's really junior oriented. So from the 37, here comes Catoctin. And unsurprisingly, the handoff to Sakari. Sakari around the left side breaks a tackle. And he's finally run out of bounds by uh, Dunbar's Nicholas Simpson. An outstanding player whose name we haven't called today at all, Simpson. But Sakari, Wally, it's nothing fancy. Just, I mean, this is just, look at the block. I mean, that's the thing that impresses you the most. The guy, you, you don't see any guys running free. There is a hat on a hat, and it gives him the opportunity to just pick and choose what hole he wants to get through. The offensive linemen are there when the tackle happens. They're part of the tackle. That's a beautiful thing. So Still think, second. guys, he cuts inside that what that block of the wide receiver. He gets a few more yards on that play. Yeah, I don't know why he doesn't do that. You know, Second and three for Catoctin. The handoff again. There you go. But I wouldn't tell him anything. I just let him run. <laughs> you run where you want, son. <laughs> and that'll, uh, they, uh, they're marking that one, I think, around the 48, and that should be enough for a first down. And it is a first down. Look, when, you, when you have physical and quick line, you see the block right there, the four by block and the 55 there, and you see the ability to get into the line of scrimmage very quickly and get what you can. You don't see a lot of... You see a lot of running backs now get the ball. They kind of stop and stutter and pick and choose where they want to go. But... We just don't see this out of this Kentucky offense. They get the ball and get right there immediately and get what they can, get a field quickly. Derek Show that Zep, first. Derek Zep, 55. He blew that kid up on that. You know, look at that, look at that uh, right tackle, Wally. Oh, yeah. And look when that, they get down. You can put a ruler down his helmet. And They're look how that low. guard on the left. <laughs> look at him. Look at him. And the quick pitch in the back. The field goes to fields and not much of a gain there. If anything, maybe a yard. No, nope. they're saying no gain second down. Those well, shoulder pads don't raise up, Bruce. They fire out. Yeah. Hey, they, they got caught the 55, got caught up behind that kid Dunbar drove that one lineman back, and 55 got hung up behind him because it was power. I'm looking at the Dunbar defense. I'm starting to see hands on this. I'm starting to see slumped shoulders. It's as if they're starting to realize what's going on out here. You know, well, they got to stop this drive. Yeah, they really do. And the time. Okay, the time here is the very running. Double, the look, clock is running. Two by two. If they hit a slant, if they hit a slant to the wide out, they can. Oh, false start. Yeah. Maybe they did call it. He yeah, there's leaning. a flag down. He, uh, that's they a, did to the far side. Yeah, Sakari with a nice gainer, but that one's coming back. That, that flag is thrown at the 48. What do you think? He, he tried to stop. Well, if it was a false start, they would shut that play down. So. I'm not sure what he has here. Neutral zone? Huddling. Neutral zone? Here it comes. Not really sure here. Let's see. Chris Michaels. Illegal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty. You got an illegal shift on the oh, offense. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, illegal shift. Okay. Illegal but shift. he was set, wasn't he? I that's thought he was. Coach <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't me. The coach had a referee. <laughs> so he can, yeah, he can, he can, he has one second to reset now. Did, it wasn't enough time, was it? Was that enough time? Oh, oh that's, that's funny. Just, you know, just a little, <laughs> just a little, you know. It's like muscle memory, isn't it, Doug? Just freeze. He just freeze a little bit. Yeah. Come on, the second time. Oh, it's like. See, watch, watch this motion right here. Did he get it? A uh, thousand one uh, before it snapped. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating to watch this closely. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Penalty yards take it back to the uh, 44. Catoctin looking now at about a second and 12. Yeah. As the clock continues to run, we're almost out of quarter here, guys. Yeah. This is, where we're, is, is this the clock for the timeout? Is this the timeout for the, uh, yeah. the court, yeah. you know, CountySportsZone.com provides you with every score for every game, every day for every Maryland public high school. County
Sports Zone is also the official digital partner for the MPSSAA, providing the brackets for every sport and updated scores and schedules for all MPSSAA playoff contests. That's CountySportsZone.com. Well, you know, if, if you love sport, and I mean, I use it every day. I do too. I mean, that's how I get everything that yeah, I get. I can be in another game and see it, and it saved me a lot of travel, running around, worrying about stuff. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, just, I like what they do. They and Matt Beck make my job a lot easier. My buddy. And anyone, and, hey, anyone that's ever covered high school football at a TV station, gathering scores is an issue. All right, I County Sports Zone can help you with that. Wide. Throw it. He's got it. Got him. Uh, oh, got him. I think he got under pressure. I was watching the ball down. Ryan Orr probably threw it quicker than he wanted to. But there's a receiver right there. You're looking at him, uh, uh, Eli Fry, who scored the last touchdown. He was wide open. He's running that slight, that that slight post corner route right there, Just the middle of the field. Yeah. yeah. Headed to the corner right. Look at it, right. Oh, right mm -hmm. in the middle. Coach, Hell. you've been calling for that all game. I know. I know. They don't listen now. <laughs> hey, Bob, Bob Cannon and I were up here talking. If you want to really get involved and you've played high school football, please be an official because it pays there's a shortage, really well, right? And there's a shortage. I mean, you make $250 on the weekend. You know what I mean? What do you think, Wally? Let's get in shape. And hey, you football. Shape I like the strike yeah. that made me look yeah. vertical. <laughs> <laughs> or, and there's a flag down. Two flags. Three. Three flags down on that play. This should be an interesting I referee, think, though. I, I think they uh, all agree with whatever call they're making right here. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. I think they've Third done down. a nice job, the official crew today. They're, they're keeping it under control, that's for sure. We, Bob and I were talking. The youth game pay fifty dollars a game up in our area. You do four games on a Saturday, that's two hundred, and some places it's cash. I should have done that instead of coaching. You just, uh, <laughs> I guess though, if you get paid in cash, you don't want to let the losing team's fans see you get paid in cash, right? <laughs> or the parents. Look, look, see that? In the parking lot. Oh, I thought they were in Snap It. It's Snap It. They'd have got him with too many oh. men on the field. I don't know why. That's very unsound for Catoctin. Some, That's you know, the they snapped that ball. They were done for. Have they punted tonight? I think this might be their first. Maybe. Oh, nice punt. Real too. nice punt. Beautiful. They're going to mark that one out of bounds down around the 20. Let's see. Uh, let's see where they decide it goes. Yeah, at 19 yard line. That, that's where Dunbar will go to work. So a positive for Dunbar. They did get a defensive stop. Something to build on. But here's my question, guys. Is the hole too deep now? We're in the fourth quarter. Four minutes to go. No, more than that. The fourth quarter. Just I, don't, I don't. I don't think. I don't think this game is out of reach. I don't think because we know. I think we know. Wait a minute. We're still in the third quarter. Yeah, we're still in the third quarter. Four minutes to this the third clock quarter. is driving me nuts. We're Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, we have a They're lot of game to left. Being in the hole. We have a lot of game left. They, this is an important drive right here. Karan Moore, the sophomore quarterback, presided over a great season. That's great struggling effort. tonight. Look at that. Got away. This Wearing Lamar effort. Jackson's cleats and looking like him. Oh, that's a horse collar. Yeah. Do we have a, do we have a, we do have a flag. Yeah, that is so a horse collar tackle. Flag. Yes. So just, there's a break for Dunbar. Just, yeah, I hope he came out of it okay. That'll really rock your world when you get yanked down like that. Personal foul, horse collar tackle on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the other run. First down. Well, Wally, you said it. This drive is huge, and that just helped them out a lot a considering lot. field position. Definitely. That'll Definitely. take it all the way out to the 45-yard line, their own 45-yard line. But Dunbar is desperate for a break, and they just got one. This this has they have to put oh, six to eight on the board. Well, here. this is the deal. They got to put him in one-on-one, -on -one, Wally, just like this. Right. You know, double wide, both sides, back out of the backfield, run him out of numbers. Didn't get it. Going to be short. On that that was uh, for Dunbar. Washington. That was a uh, uh, Kenyon Washington. I, I think a little tempo here is exactly what they needed as well. You know, use your speed, use your athletes, get to the line of scrimmage very quickly, call the play, maybe catch them off balance, not lined up correctly. Somebody may be open down the field, so use all your weapons here. Dunbar in Catoctin territory at the 49. There's the throw. Got a block out there, and we got a flag. It depends on who the flag is against, but Darius Green did get it across the, the first down marker. Let's see who this is on. Holding it, the child's got his head down that did it right on the outside there. 
The Texans DC seems to think it's on him, but no, no it's I'm not. No problem with wearing big pink gloves like that. That looked so like a now. pretty good play. I saw the receiver blocking on the outside. Play. It was one guy out there blocking. I thought it was a pretty good block. And he finished them uh, on the ground. They threw the flag. If they do the replay, you'll know. see. You guys wow. believe in body language? Did you just yeah. see the Dunbar sideline? They, they, you know, they with every penalty, yeah. they lose some momentum. And you see it happening on the field and on the sidelines as well. So that's back in the 42 now. Looking at a second and 12. Stack trip to the left. I think they're going to throw it Looking at the left Kevin side short. and under through. Mm. Incomplete Passing third down. Complete. See, now you have a penalty. Passing you have a negative play here. They're in a third down and long situation. Drive. Took them out and of the these drive. are the unfortunate <laughs> things that have been happening to Dunbar all day. And it's not just, you know, them doing it to themselves. Right. Right. A lot right. of that is Kentucky taking them out of their game yeah. plan yeah. and playing solid defense. Well, here we go. Well, either go three over two on the left side. And if they don't take that safety over there and they hit the vertical, they're in deep doo-doo. Karan Moore looking that way. Pocket collapse. They're going to get him. Big and off. guess what? Guess what? <laughs> and on that play, big number 51, Jacob McIlvain. There he, uh, 81 also in on the play. That was Connor on Cook. The These are two names we're starting to tall an awful lot. It's all line play, Bruce. It's very simple. Uh, top the line, offensively and defensively, is outplaying the Dunbar line, offensively I mean, and defensively. It's just, it's just relentless pressure. Is that what you see, Wally? Relentless pressure. You just saw Cook almost <laughs> intercept the ball and and almost score a touchdown for his team and now coming up with a big sack here on a third down play. Maybe going to Nick Ooh. fourth and 17. Uh, they came hard to block that one. It went straight up and it's going to take a bounce back to Tocton's way and they're going to down that at the 42 yard line and that's where Catoctin will go to work. You hear the big Catoctin crowd. You see it on the screen. They're thrilled with what they're seeing. They probably have 2,000 people here. You know, that was a seven yard punt we talked about last night. You yeah. know? Yes, yes, yes. Just those little things there. Little things right there have changed the competitive this entire game. And Catoctin's had a lot of good field position in this game too, guys. Oh, the whole thing's been field position and fumble early on. Not taking anything away from Catoctin because they came to play. But they're showing you some different formation. They got the little guy stacked in there and got that extra block out of it. Or the handoff to Sakari. You get the feeling, Doug, that those uh, Dunbar coaches got together and says 28's killing us. We got to figure out a way to stop him because Sakari has been relatively quiet since then. Well, yes and no because what happens is that's why one team speeding up offensively. And these guys are slowing it down. They'll take four yards at a clip sure. because every time they do, they're taking 30 seconds off the clock. So you know, you run four plays. You know, you, you've eaten up two minutes. And, and that's the and great, you got the first half. Right. right. And that's the great part about having a big lead like this, okay? You can live with those four-yard plays like that. You don't need the big explosive plays. You want to get chunks and chunks and chunks. Eat time off the clock. Look at and maybe throw the ball deep this. right look, here. Let's look go. Look at that. Look a little different offensively. So carry yes, around outside. the right side. Yes, found outside. some room. Little shotgun look. Gets inside the 30. They run him out at the 26. And Catoctin in business with a fresh set of downs, and their fans can feel it. They've been doing, able to do this all day. You see old style running, get out to the edge. All right, not even being touched until you get to the sideline. I mean, this kid, he just goes point A to point B. He does. You know? Straight line is not fancy. I don't think I've seen one fake out or one cut. Okay, it's been get the ball and go. Yeah. Hey, it's a very simple game when you're doing that, right? <laughs> against so. Fairmont Heights, he rushed for 290 yards and six TDs Jeez. against Fairmont Heights. That's it. That's yeah. the first <laughs> busted play. He got up there too quick, and Orr had to tuck it in and just make what he could out of it. And he did gain maybe two yards. That'll bring up second Orr and eight. He just run where the running back was supposed to go. The the you, was you'll see he just ran past right. the handoff. There it is. Whoops. A little oh. high. This yeah. is going where he's supposed to run. Right there. Follow the guys. Replace him. Exactly. Yeah. Something happened. Just replace him. Improvise it. Right, Coach? Yeah. 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 There's Ryan. There's a good look at uh, Ryan Orr, who's had a spectacular game. You know what? I like them out of the eye and have Orr follow to carry in and um, the, the fullback. From the Jake, 25. Jake Baker. Ran out of that tackle. Not going to run out of the second one, that's for sure. I think he may have Security. gotten the first down, or he's he not. He's within a yard of it. Maybe not a yard. Nah, he's going to be short. That'll bring up third and about six, it looks like. 
Well, they're starting to talk to him. To number eight, I thought we were going to get a penalty there, but he didn't. A little, little chippiness after the play, yeah, you know, a little yeah. something, a little, you know, get up off my guy and uh, watch at the end of this play right here. And get up off my guy. Yeah. Okay. That, a little, <laughs> you know. That little. was, let's give him credit. That's <laughs> Michael Doherty. <laughs> With a little reminder. A little reminder. Know, yeah. A reminder, you know. This is Attaboy, huge. Michael. This is, this, is, this is a big play. That's a very big play. And you play. go to your big play guys to and carry. He and he may have gotten you the first down. He's got it. He does. First down. And they're just eating that clock up. They're, they won't even run a play before the quarter's over. Oh, think. yeah. This is one of those drives. You watch the plate right here. Go out pulling the beat up in there. Just follow your guys. I mean, this game can be very simple when guys make a commitment to do assignment football. And Kentucky has done that from the first kickoff. And it has shown in their performance. Whoop, that little penalty? You know, the... The interesting huh? thing is that we all keep using one word, and that's efficient. Efficient. I mean, I mean, it's not spectacular, but it's efficient. I don't think we've seen anything from the Panthers' offense right now or defense that was totally out of the ordinary. Too much Just stepping on fundamental the Fundamental football. Oop, they got it. They got it. Yep. It's tough to see in that angle, but yeah, they did. These guys wow. first down. Wow. Yeah. Credit card. Yeah. <laughs> it's a game of wow. inches. Believe me, it is a game of inches when it's all said and done. That's beautiful stuff. And they're going to mark it down there. It looks like the 17. Catoctin leading this 31-8 to eight late in the third quarter. And I think even if it's a little short, they'll go for it anyway here. Yeah. Well, now that brings up uh, brings up fourth and one. Fourth and inches now. So you got fourth and maybe six inches here. Yeah. Oh, oh you know what? The angle stuff. Correct. Yeah, the angle. In it? Yeah. Out of four now. See, we're sitting here. We're sitting yeah. here on a forty-yard yeah. line, and you look at that angle, and it's hard to tell. Uh, they're young. They're in, in the neutral zone. Lining up in the neutral zone. He's got to go through the right-hand side. Just dive it in. Boom. That's pretty impressive. Dunbar saying no, he didn't get it, but there's a signal right there from uh, Chris Michaels, and that is a first down for Catoctin. Late here in the fourth quarter, and the fans and the guys in white are starting to feel this. It's starting to look inevitable here. Well, you, anytime you get off the ball like that, watch it, watch it. Right behind. Look at that drive there. Look at the look, low, low pads. You know, you like to see all yeah. slime and get yeah. low, kind of yeah. roll there. He hips didn't have it ahead of time. Get that going. 44. So and you know what? They'll never call Aiden a runner. But he's <laughs> pushing him. So that's the end of the third quarter. Catoctin leading Dunbar 31 to 8 in the 1A state championship. We'll be back with the fourth quarter coming up. Stick around, everybody. A lot more football to come. You're a Ravens fan through and through. And now's your chance to show your pride in a big way. Get the m t Bank Ravens debit card of your choice and limited edition Bluetooth speaker with any new m t personal checking account. Rush to any m t Bank branch today. Toyota-thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? Get awesome end-of-the-year savings on a Tacoma with up to 2,000 cash back. Or get 2,000 back on a 2020 Tundra. Or take a low 1.9% APR for 60 months. Toyota-thon is on. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. Introducing Wendy's 2 for 5. The only 2 for 5 with Wendy's fresh, never-frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave's Single Spicy Chicken Sandwich, 10-piece crispy, or spicy nuggets. Pick any 2 for 5 bucks. Only at Wendy's. It was an accident. Then the other guy's insurance company calls and says, we don't need to hire lawyers. We can work it out ourselves. If you get in an accident, call Avinas, Tolzman, and Hamilton. I'll tell them to talk to my lawyer. Call Avinas, Tolzman, and Hamilton. It's a tough world. You need a tough lawyer. You're a Ravens fan through and through. And now's your chance to show your pride with the M&T Bank Ravens debit card of your choice. Get it with any new personal checking account. Just pick one of our accounts with the features that are most important to you. Rush to any M&T Bank branch today. We're back at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium as Catoctin continues their drive. There's, There's the a handoff. Ball. Nice pull by the guard. Room to run. Up in there. Beautiful. Carson Sakari yet again. 
It's all line play, Wally. This is football 101. Right down to the 10 yard line. And, and this is this is what you learn in rec league ball. Okay, when you're trying to establish your first run plays, you get the dive straight, you get your trap straight, straight. And what you want to establish is point of attack, your aiming points, and getting downhill with your running backs when you see the box cut and stay behind the guys. You know, this is just crazy. How excited these fans are. They made the long trip from wow. Frederick County. They got to be loving this. We're in the Toyota RAV4 red zone. Ball's on a 10 yard line, second and five. I love this kid, or as a quarterback. Or with the handoff. Oh. And dropped immediately was Sakari. I think I'd keep him out of that middle of that field right Taking now. That hand There's off a lot of room to the right. Scary. I'd give him room to use it. Because there ain't nothing in there but big boys that want to smack you back. Yeah. You know, there's a bunch of them. The old coach yeah. in there spreading hate and discomfort. Two, that's exactly yeah. <laughs> don't run me in there, coach. he's inside wearing number one, like you said, Wally. He don't get number one because he's a nice guy. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Coach, yeah. you, you touched upon or and I think that's the difference between them and Fort Hill. These guys have a passing game. Fort Hill, that's all pretty much crowded down all the time. These guys yeah. are balanced, yeah. pretty balanced. Yeah. Now, if you run a double slant and they stick and you bring him out of the backfield. There's the handoff. Nothing doing. Oh, we can go in there. Dunbar with that maroon wall. Yeah, Doug keeps saying that. He, he'd go to the Sakari outside. The that was Sakari, and Sakari stopped again. The initial the 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 first first by hey, you know, one of the things, there's a word called the John Cox Respect the Game Award for sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. Boy, this team really deserves that award. Seven, and these fans, this big time. They've done a nice job here, player-wise and all. I don't think they got a future in this field goal deal. Well, they're, they're going for it. Well, they're going to try it again. That's Simon Granados. He uh, missed the last one. I, I think they're just going about this clock management thing and taking their time. Yeah, well, that's you exactly know, right. Using every every element of the clock right now. They don't mind the short day. I mean, they, this is four down territory. You go for fourth and one. But using the field goal I here think, and get a I think not. He doesn't have the block, but he can't fake. They can't pull. I thought they were going to try and fake it. I go, no, no, no. They won't let you do that. We used to do that. <laughs> and they passed the rule that said you can't. Where's the block? Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Popovic, you're, uh, you're down there by the bench for Catoctin. They're, they're huddling on the field there. What is the attitude? What is the, take the temperature at that sideline right now? Well, all game long, guys, they have had, they've been upbeat, they've been confident about it, and I noticed that, I said time and again on during the warm-ups. You know, I was very impressed with their business-like manner. Uh, they were calm, they were composed. Uh, they felt like they certainly belonged here, and they played like it. And you see this in the game. They got off to an early start uh, in the first half, and I think that all kind of fed off each other. And they're doing a great job here in the second half as well. If anything, just moving the football. I'm impressed. I think we're all impressed. Mike, the, the shock is kind of wearing off now. I mean, I, I understand what I'm seeing here. None of us expected to see this. Mike, are tip you, your cap. Yeah. Are you, you weren't kicking that field goal, were you, Mike? No. Something, no. Are you kidding me? Something, no. Something's going we're on going here. The air. Something's, going, something's going on here. Well, they're, they're, us, uh, they're lining up for it. That's uh, a strange event right there. That'll be a 23-yarder. He can't hit. Make it's a liar out of me. Not wide right. Oh. Had enough kick on it, just wide to the right. I don't get that fourth and short. Uh, so yeah, 31, I, I would have gone for with the way that look, they've been successful on the ground. Anytime you got Dunbar in your backpack, you better get every point you can get. Yeah. I'm telling you. You're averaging about seven hope, a carry I right now. I hope this doesn't come back and bite them. Yeah, yeah. With that line where they were, yeah, I'd have given that full back. But, you know, like I said, it's, it's been fundamental football on both sides of the ball. So as much as we've seen some firepower out of Dunbar, They've been able to keep that offense somewhat stymied and not let them get any real success, you know, so far in this half. 9.43 in a game, you, you got to score 23 points here. <laughs> They're capable. Yeah. They're capable. You got to have an awful lot go right. To, they should have had to score 30. And it's got to start going right right here. They, they're out of time. Karan Moore and company. Moore flushed out of the pocket as he has been all night. Goes downfield with it. Did he catch it inbounds? Yes, he did. It's catch, yes. So Dunbar is not going to quit. You can you can bet on that. Any team that Lawrence Smith coaches won't be a quitter. Uh, that pass was complete to uh, Khalil Bailey, and that's going to move the sticks all the way up to the 35-yard line. So a big gainer there for Dunbar as they try to mount some kind of comeback. Question's going to be pass protection, guys. Well, they're they're bringing they're bringing them. Oh. 
a tipped uh, reception. Uh, they're saying no. The referee yeah. saying no. He didn't make the. Uh, he didn't make the catch. So well, good effort, though. Great, great, real great, good effort. Really good. And concentration effort. too. Really good effort by Tariq Syke. As a receiver, you see it go off one pair of hands, and and you got to really be locked in. Uh, it looks maybe like a flag was thrown down right here. Yeah, I'm... he threw the football away in disgust, and uh, ref saw that through the okay. flag. Okay. Uh, I hate to see that. That's the one thing Dunbar can't afford right now. I don't think I throw that flag. I was going to say, I may have looked the other way on that one. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot worse. Well, especially when you get that second effort type of thing that that kid gave. Oh. All the way back to the 20-yard line. Just a breaking for Dunbar. That Devastated really penalty right there. So that'll bring up a first and, or uh, a second and 25, After right? After the play, or would be first dead ball, delay a game, offense. Five-yard penalty. It's second down. Well, now they're on. coming back upfield. Okay. Did they wave it? Oh. <laughs> okay, the ball's on the 30 then. So they did move it up. And that'll be a second and 15. So, Bob, are, are they marking that off at the spot of the foul? Was that the... It appears to me it looked like it was... He gave a dead ball delay a game. Delay a game signal, so I wasn't looking, but it looked like they laid on the ball or laid on a player and held the game up. That's okay. what that was. And of course, Bob Cannon, our official in the uh, booth. Moore with a pass, well, completes he's got it. A, he's got a 40, quick 45. Going to get out towards midfield, not quite to midfield, but close enough. And again, that's Khalil Bailey, whose name we're calling a I'm lot. I'm afraid later. they got that on the wide receiver on this side for hitting the kid after the play. Yep. After the play. Right there, 14 whack them from behind. I saw it. I think that's what it was. That's just crazy. Well, uh, those are Here's the call. Personal foul. Yep. Blind side blocked on the yeah. offense. Well, we, we, we've seen that call here three or four down. times. And, you know, at some point, you know, as a player, and, and I'm not putting this on the coaches, but I'm as a player, you have to recognize when you hit guys in the back. It's, yeah. it's a natural. Well, I mean, actually, he gave, a, he gave a blind side block signal. So that player didn't see him coming. He must have hit him from the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it never came off the field. It shook up a little bit. And, you know, it's, it's just something in our game. He the, got way, the way rules have, trained, have, have, have been changed and all those things, you have to be cautious and you have to be aware of the rules. And we've seen that call four or five times today by Dunbar. Moore with a quick handoff, and Catoctin all over it, dropped in his tracks. Wally, they're so strict on that play. In my college crew, we lost a, a game because one official missed a blindside block, and we were suspended for a game. Wow. Wow. It's a big safety call. Jake Baker with a big hit on that play. And that'll bring up third and 15 as Dunbar tries desperately to find some answers here. Well, this is it. They better find it on this play. Karan Moore. Going to be brought down. Just exceptional. And again, uh, uh, you know, we've called his name a lot as well. But again, Connor Cook, number 81, right there in the middle of your screen, making play after play on defense. You know, right here, you have to look throw the him, ball over right here. Look, he's yeah. athletic. Yeah. Look at the hand just grabbing that guy. He's just a junior, too. And also give credit on that sack to uh, Jason Howard. Assisted on the tackle. And that'll bring up fourth down. And again, Dunbar in punt formation. Here's the punt. And it's going to be picked up at the 40. Head straight upfield. Look at this midfield. Down to the 47. You might have counseled a player to go ahead and let that roll, but uh, uh, Eric or Eli Fry rather wasn't going to have it. He picked it up, turned it into a gainer. Mm -hmm. he, took a, he took a look up, took one step one way, and brought it back the other. Last front return. Yeah, Bruce, I was going to say the same thing. I was thinking the same thing there. Just let, hey, let it go. Don't take any chances. You can't be a hero if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> when you're 18 years old, you want to be the man going back home now to Catoctin. <laughs> Yeah, I picked that up reading for touchdown. He'll be saying that 50 years later. Yes, sir. Like Al Bundy scored four touchdowns in one game, remember? There you go. You got Hulk Hulk High School. Hulk High School. <laughs> you got to love Al Bundy. 
Again, he's still on his feet. Carson Sakari. Um, I get the feeling, and we don't want to sound like a broken record. We've mentioned this a couple times this half, but you get the feeling that Dunbar decided Sakari is not going to hurt him anymore. And, and, and they're... They're keying on him. They're, they're shadowing him. They're doing whatever they have to in do. In order for Dunbar to get back in this game, they had to take him out of the game. They, I had to take him out of the equation. Look, he was just chopping up that, that team and eating up the clock. So that was the game plan come out in halftime, and I think it has worked to perfection. Uh, the other side of that is that Dunbar offensively has not been able to get anything going consistently. Right. Second and eight now from the 45 of Dunbar. Katakton. Look at that block that missed him. But again, uh, Sakari uh, yeah. unable to get much out of it. Maybe a gain of a yard. That'll bring up third down. 51 giving 55 the Blues. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're maximizing this clock right now. Look, there's no. They're not in a hurry to get back into the huddle. No. They're getting their fresh bodies in there. You know, substitutes and everything. So. They're using the maximum potential of this clock every snap. They're not snapping the ball until we maybe have, you know, two or three seconds on the time clock there. So uh, not in a hurry. Uh, just kind of sitting back on that lead, being comfortable. That Jake, Jacob McElvain, he's a piece of work now if you watch him play. Left side tackle. There's a the handoff and room that time. Crosses the 35 down near the 30. And again, it is Sakari who had been quiet this half, but he found a spot right there, didn't he? Hey, that's your quick trap right there. Golf pull, quick trap yep. up the middle. And, and on that crowd of sled right there and, and get it Bronson moving. Snur still blocking. Yeah. Never met a guard in my life didn't love the trap. <laughs> <laughs> right, Doug? Um, it pronounced trap. Look at my, my, my guys in that, in that nice, fancy huddle right there. Bruce, it's Christmas Day for those guys. Yes, it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say? First one blamed, last one acknowledged. <laughs> yeah, they ain't saying them linemen ain't blocking. There it goes again. And again, Sakari. You're not really worrying at this point about scoring. You just want the clock to move. You want to move the sticks as much as you can, but really... Burning clock and moving the sticks is probably more important for Catoctin right now than actually scoring points. Exactly. You don't want them to get the ball back in their hands, you know? That's why I was so surprised about that field goal. I just don't, I can't understand that one, but I don't judge what anybody else does. People said enough stuff about me, you know? What, what are you doing? I thought it was a good idea. But, you know, that's the truth. You just got to keep possession of the ball. When you got it, you keep it. When they got it, try and get it back from them. Inside the five-minute mark, Sakari. Oh, eight missed guy. Oh, he didn't see him or something. Coming up and uh, making a big-time play for Dunbar was Devontae Ayers, and Joshua Carr also in on that. It's going to be a loss. Sakari hasn't lost a lot of yards tonight. It's going to bring up third down and 11. Oh, Jake Baker ran right by that guy. He must have been uh, one of the few times. Yeah, uh, they've been laying the wood on people. Yeah, they, I guess they kind of got up and gave each other that stare, like, "Hey, man, you see? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah I was out there." Yeah. So we got a we got a timeout on the field, but we're going to keep it right here. I, you ought to see this crowd for Catoctin. They feel this coming too, and Catoctin, as Doug pointed out, has got one state championship in its history, and that was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. These people are not used to being at this level and being dominant. And you can almost feel the love coming out of this crowd right in front of us from Kentucky. And that was a long drive down to Annapolis today. And boy, has their team lived up. Really impressive. Well, Doug, you know, you, you talked about this team and really the, the, the process they have been going through to get back into the state championship game. Coach, you, you made the comment of this being a team of destiny yep. Uh, yep. to come out here and get this done today. And it showed, I think it showed by when they walked in the stadium, they were here on a mission, mm -hmm. and they have just, it has just followed the, the game plan perfectly. Wally, I knew you grew up down in the south a little bit. I don't know if they hunted rabbits or not, but if you got a good rabbit dog, you get his butt kicked by, kicked by a big old dog a couple times, and after that, he comes back with a vengeance. And that's, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what happened to these guys. Good read for Dunbar that's there, man. Give play. full credit. Joshua Carr, one of the few seniors on the team, said nothing doing, and that's a big loss for Catoctin. Yeah, Josh, big rangy kid. You're not fooling him on the outside. And you know what? That's the first little bit of trickery we've seen yeah. all day. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of reverse there. You know, something that they have not tried, had to do all day because it's been really a strictly a down here running attack. A little trickery, eh, Wally? A little trickery there. A little trickery. 
Well, it's fourth down. A timeout on the field. Uh, we'll be back with more from Catoctin and Dunbar right after this. Introducing Wendy's Two for Five. The only two for five with Wendy's fresh, never frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave's Single Spicy Chicken Sandwich, 10-piece crispy, or spicy nuggets. Pick any two for five bucks. Only at Wendy's. Not one, but two. Toyota-thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? Get awesome end-of-the-year savings on a Tacoma with up to 2,000 cash back. Or get 2,000 back on a 2020 Tundra. Or take a low 1.9% APR for 60 months. Toyota-thon is on. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Maryland's best high school football team space off in the state championship finals. Live from Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis. Class 2A, Middletown takes on Potomac. Tonight at 7 on the CW Baltimore. We're back. 4.15 to play in the state 1A championship. Catoctin all over Dunbar, 31 to 8, but they're punting now. And the Poets, if they're going to mount any kind of comeback, it's got to start quickly. He's done a nice job. I think he's only punted three times, yeah. but they've been all solid punts, you and know? And that's inside the 20, which is about where you want to put it. Wally, your old coach, Ted Marchabroda, taught me an awful lot about the NFL. Yeah. And he told me on the punts, you want it between the numbers and the sideline mm -hmm. because that cuts off 75% of the field. I've never forgotten. That. Uh, you know what? That's that's why those guys were uh, perfectionists and did quite well. I mean, not, not too many people knew that Ted, uh, well, yeah, you knew him here as a Baltimore coach, yeah. but, you know, he was one of those guys that organized all those Buffalo Bills ones back in the day as well. He, he was, was the really offensive guru. Yeah, he was offensive guru, man. He yeah, taught he... us a lot of football in Baltimore. Got it. Um, nice guy, too. I mean, especially the high school coaches, and he, he actually hired Mel Phil and a couple other high school coaches to work with him with the Colts. Oh, his most famous deal is that he is the one that catapulted Johnny United as a scorer. Yeah. <laughs> well, he'll, he'll tell you that. He was the quarterback they cut. He was know? the quarterback they cut. And oh, yeah. I remember asking him about that, and he says, that tells you all you need to know about the Steelers in the 50s. <laughs> Uh-oh, draw. He can draw. go more. He can run. But Catoctin sticking their face in there and bringing him down. Got the first That's going to be a first down, which is exactly what Dunbar needs. But Dunbar really needs to slow his clock down because that's the big enemy right now. Yeah, that's 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 the, their major. Really, that's their opponent right now. Getting something quick, but with only 352 left in the game, and you're down by roughly 20 points. Got more screen. That was nice. Got a receiver, but man, read immediately coming up and making the play for Katakin was uh, Tony Trigano on. Uh, we haven't called his name that many times tonight, but he's one of their defensive leaders. Made a big play on that one. Yeah, it's uh, lot, not a lot of opportunities. Not a lot of opportunities because they play so well up front. Right. <laughs> not opportunities to get the ball downfield. So uh, you don't hear a lot of safety name calls. I mean, you don't have that kind of uh, production offensively. And off. That's what they still on been. his feet, battling for yards, gets out to the 40, and I believe he picked up the first down. Yes, he did. So Dunbar putting something together here late in the game. Physical run. Uh, great job of getting some explosion in the middle of the field. Nice stiff arm there. Nice stiff arm to get some yardage up the field. You gotta love it, guys. Kentucky's DC's down here. He's still fired up <laughs> as if uh, they're trailing in the game. <laughs> So Dunbar at their own 40. They trail this one 31 to 8 inside three minutes to play. Good defensive coordinators never know how much time left on the clock, and they never know what the score is. I mean, they're just owned in. Moore's pass uh, sailed that time, went over the uh, intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. This has been classic 5-2 defensive football. Those guys are doing a great job. They're changing coverages around. And I, that's a top that defending Dunbar spread has got to be one of the toughest things to do. You know? But they won't, you, you're not, you're not taking them out of that 5-2. 
Second and ten from the 40 for Dunbar. That defensive front comes off of that football. Moore stays in the pocket. Now they're going to flush him. Now they're going to collapse on him. Yeah. It's been all it's been all defensive and offensive line. That might have done it. And once again, that is Connor Cook yep. making the stop. That has been really, I think, the deciding factor in this game. Uh, fundamentally, uh, athletic-wise and, and, and team-wise, I think they're balanced on both sides. But uh, that line for Kentucky today has really played an aggressive game, and they have maintained that intensity for the entire game. And they are not letting up, even with 2.17 left in the game, you're up by 23. Watch him come off of this football. More. Got his receiver at the 45. Incomplete. Incomplete. That was Darius Carr. It looked like he came down with it, but couldn't hold on. Fundamentals. Fundamentals, Bruce. It was a great catch, great pass, but your defender's right there in his hip pocket. Knocked the ball out. Didn't maintain control. Incomplete pass. Great fundamentals there. You know what this Catoctin team has, and you don't realize it watching them play? They've got really good team speed. Yes, you know, they do. From yes. the biggest lineman all the way to uh, the free safety. I mean, they've got, they close. They, they play team football. Yes. Nobody would have bet 31-8, I can tell you that. <laughs> no one. Oh, oh look at that. Gosh. And that puts the exclamation point on the game. That's what the game's been all about right there. Oh. Late in the game, inside two minutes to play. Dunbar trying to make something happen, and Catoctin makes yet another play. That's Jake Baker right there. I mean, look look at that swim. right there. Oh. Fighting, swim, fundamentals. You see it all right there on that play. Wow. Just a great, great performance. Jake hurt himself by too. the Cougars. Great performance. He ran great. right past Kenyon Washington, too. Yeah. Swam. Just that swim technique. You don't do that unless you practice it. So, Doug, I was going to ask you about three minutes ago, if you're Catoctin coaching staff, how do you keep the players from jumping out of their skin? But at this point, you don't, do you? Mm -mm, mm -mm. You just let them jump. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, I didn't understand. I didn't like it when we first did it. But in the old days, the stance used to clear. And it was crazy. I'm glad we don't do that anymore. I have to give a little shout out to Mike Calhoun, Ryan Hines, Andy Warner, the people that do a lot of work to put this thing on. They do great work. The to uh -oh. took a knee. <laughs> and the veteran coach, Doug Williams, just got his Gatorade shower. Doug, did you get five of those? Whew. I, I'll tell you, I got pneumonia from one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally worth it. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, unless you're the guy that's getting hit with it. <laughs> I had a kid lose the bucket one time, hit me in the head with a big orange cola. <laughs> oh, my God, I thought he broke my neck. <laughs> but you'll take it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Clock continues to run. Minute 25. They're feeling it here on the Catoctin sideline. And they take another knee. Dunbar has a timeout left, but they are choosing they're not, not to use it. it. Nah. They're just going to let this they clock wanna, run out. They want to just get out of Dodge. Now, let's talk about Dunbar for a minute. We've made the point throughout that they only have five guys that were on that last championship team. This is a very young team. It is. It is. You get the feeling that they're going to let this sit in their belly and burn for a while, and they're going to be able to build on this. Well, it's the same concept that Kentuckman came in with because they sat there for a year and let this thing burn with Fort Hill. So when they felt they got up another opportunity to see those guys again, they stepped up to the challenge. So you need motivation, you got it right here tonight. See well, what happens. And you can't take anything away from this guy. No, you know, not at that, all. That, that and just, that's it. Yeah. Uh, we've still got 30 seconds left on the clock, but the celebration has begun. A well-earned victory. And frankly, you got to tip your cap to the Catoctin Cougars. They took it to Dunbar. Punch him in the mouth early. Dunbar was not able to come back and really a, a deserving state 1A champion. It, it, it really was. I mean, they came into the stadium before the game even started. Uh, it was business all the way through, and that did not stop once the ball got into play and Dunbar showed up. So great job. Excellent performance on every level. Kentucky, you've earned yourself a 1A state championship. Doug, no question about that as far as earning it. Right? You know, it was uh, classic high school football. I formation, you know, a little bit of 
of, of just a very, very little bit of shotgun stuff back. And, you know, just they just came out and they played great line play both ways. And the line, you know, from every position were just functionally sound. And as I said, real team speed. We're watching Lawrence Smith wish uh, the other team well. The sportsmanship is on display here at the end of the game. This is one of my favorite parts of a championship game is when they line up and shake hands. Wally, they're not always saying nice things to each other, but... You know, you know, the spirit is there, right? You, you, you always respect your competitors as much as you can. Look, for that time that we're on the field out there fighting, yeah, I want to rip your head off. But at the end of the day, we're out here fighting for the same thing. You know, we work toward the same thing. We both understand what it takes to get this point. So great job of really doing this. And Maryland does this after every game. So great job that they actually take time out and knowledge each other and show that respect as competitors every game. Well, Dunbar turned away in their quest for an 11th state championship. Lawrence Smith was looking for his seventh straight, and they'll have to try it again next year because this year, shockingly, it was all Catoctin as you watch the celebration. And Doug, I ask you this after every one of these championship games because it's always an appropriate question. Does this ever get old? In this situation, the most amazing thing is to be the team that nobody thinks is going to win the state championship. Mm -hmm. They just figured Dunbar's got it. Yeah, and I think, you know, I don't know what was it said. Hey, I got good news and bad news. The good news is this beat Fort Hill. The bad news you gotta play is you've got to go play Dunbar. Dunbar. But you know what? Uh, it, there's nothing more special than that. Look at this little deal here. You want to get the trophy. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. And it's the entire team, guys. It's not just one player. It's not just one individual. The entire team runs over there. And it's almost like they're connected, you know what I mean? I think that they have that little <laughs> guy the in there. He's sort of a special guy for them. You'll see it. Here's his, the moment. Uh, this is, yeah. You go out there in August, Doug and Wally, and this is what you play for. And I always love this shot because when that trophy comes up, you're going to see some unbridled joy and the joy of finishing a job very well done, a job that started back in August, and there it is. The guy that just gave the trophy away is a longtime Fort Hill fan, a Fort Hill uh, cousin of Mike Calhoun. <laughs> <laughs> for him to give that trophy away, that was a tough deal for Mike Calhoun. Uh, had to hurt. <laughs> Look at those faces. Oh, man. Look at those faces. Look at the reaction. That's a bunch of young guys that banded together and decided to go for it, and they got it done. And right in the middle right there is Carson Sicari, and we're going to tell you more about him coming up. But another tremendous game for him, another tremendous game for his teammates, and let's call it a shocking upset. Nobody saw this coming, perhaps the folks at Catoctin High in Frederick. We also, we need to sort of offer secondhand congratulations, guys, to our producer, Pete. Ferraro, that's whose right. kids go to Catoctin High, that's and right. he's got a big smile. Let's go downstairs to Mike Popovic. Mike. <laughs> All right, great, Coach. Congratulations. It's been 10 years. Talk about this year's feat. Uh, first of all, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That victory came from Him, 100%. Came from my assistant coaches and those kids. Period. I was just a piece of this. That's all I was. I was just along for the ride. Period. Coach, you were talking up in the box about coming off the loss to Fort Hill last year that you guys were on a mission this year. Is that a fair assessment? Oh, that was a big assessment. We put that score up on our uh, weight room, and it's been up all year into the first game. Then once the first game game, we took that down. So these kids just had a focus to get it done. That's all. Hey, Coach, talk about this game today. What was the difference in the game? What did you guys do that you felt was a difference? Oh, my, oh my gosh. Defense and the turnovers. Defense and the turnovers. That was huge. How do you beat Dunbar 31 days? Come on, man. That's defense and turnovers, period. Coach, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. You got it. Uh, and we've got uh, guys. Carson Sakari here with us. We'll join us in just a second. Yeah, yeah. We wanna we wanna get Sakari because yeah. he's Let's, our Life Bridge uh, uh, Health Player of the Game. All right, you're our Life Bridge Health Player of the Game, Carson. Congratulations, <laughs> you guys. And I sense this from the pregame warmups. You guys came in calm, cool, collected with a mission, and uh, you guys came out in the first half and played unbelievable. Um, we just played well today. We were um, an underdog all year. No one really respected Catoctin as much, and we just proved the whole state wrong that we are a contender and that we are a really good team. Coming off that Fort Hill win, that almost seemed like a championship game, but yet you actually had a championship game to play today. How tough was it to regroup and come back out with that kind of energy in this one? 
Um, it was pretty hard. I mean, but with all, after a win like Fort Hill, you have so much momentum, and we rolled with it into this game, and you could see that we were still had a hanger from Fort Hill in that first half, that we came out ready to play, and we went ahead, and they never came back. Hey, congrats on the win. Enjoy. Hey, Mike, yeah. I tell you what, grab, grab number seven right yeah. there. I want to hear what they all have to say. Yeah, well, we've got uh, player after player joining us, uh, Ryan Orr. And, Ryan, uh, unbelievable performance. And, again, you guys came out, uh, shot out of a cannon in this one, and, and certainly made a statement. Yeah, all year we believed no one could stop our offense, and we did that tonight. And, I mean, we just proved it. No one can, no one can stop our offense. And, um, yeah, I love these guys. I love them. When you take a look at it, that first half, how important was it coming in to start fast for you guys? Oh, it was it was extremely important because we knew if we got up on them, they'd break down, and um, that's what we did. That's what we did. The offensive and defensive line play in this game really seems to stand out, and obviously you're the benefactor of those O-line guys. Right. Yeah, they don't get enough credit at all. Um, earlier in the... <laughs> My best. Since playoffs started, I mean, they've been playing great. They've been playing absolutely great, and um, they don't get enough credit. And so, shout out to all of them. They're just they've been working so hard all year, and um, they just doesn't go unnoticed. On a question for you, Coach Williams, 29 years won this one 10 years ago. Talk about uh, what he does for the program, the kind of head coach he is. Oh, he's amazing. He doesn't just coach football players. He coaches us to be extremely great men, and um, you know, he does. I, I can't put into words how much he means to all of us. And congratulations, Ryan. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. All right, Mike. Get out of this weather. Get warm a little <laughs> okay. bit. We got another game to do. Uh, let's talk about uh, the defensive player of the game, or, or play of the game. And it came in that first half when it looked like Dunbar was trying to come back. We remember this play. Snur Bronson stepped in front of it. Took it in for a touchdown. And Wally and Coach, I really believe that was the turning point in the game right there. Definitely. Look, we knew that Kentucky was coming in here, and it was a different feel to this game. But that play really recognized their dominance and how they had their game plan going. They had watched film and had prepared for this moment. And that was a huge defensive play right there to just take the breath really out of what Dunbar was trying to bring you, to this You thing. could almost see figuratively Dunbar's shoulders kind of slump when yeah. that happened, Doug. You could. You could. And, you know, that's the result of drill, 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 drill. If you go and watch those guys practice, I guarantee you, just like watching Damascus practice, just like watching Ligonor practice, they go to work and they work hard and they work all year long. Well, we've got an awful lot more to talk about. Coming up at 6.30, our special high school sports special that will link this game and then our game tonight. But uh, Wally and Mike and Coach and I, we got a lot more to digest out of this one. We'll show you some highlights. We'll run it down for you. So stick around. We're not by any means through here at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Value City Furniture, we search the world to bring you designer looks without the designer prices. With quality you might not expect, but definitely deserve. Like 100% feather cushions in so soft fabrics, dovetail drawers with metal glides, and solid wood tables with metal supports. That's what we call great furniture. Put us to the test. Shake, knock, feel our furniture. You'll see our designer looks will always outdo the competition. We are Value City Furniture, and we're going to be your new favorite furniture store. Toyota Thon is on. Time to get a great deal on Corolla Hatchback, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Oh, honey, look. Is anybody seeing this? Wow. Anybody? Now, lease an adventure ready RAV4 for just $219 a month. Or buy with low 1.9% APR financing. Or take $2,000 total cash allowance. Toyota Thon is on. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Introducing Wendy's 2 for 5. The only 2 for 5 with Wendy's fresh, never frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave's Single Spicy Chicken Sandwich, 10-piece crispy, or spicy nuggets. Pick any 2 for 5 bucks. Only at Wendy's. One, but two. I have a secret. There's such a thing as monsters. <laughs> Even if the monsters come, don't have to be afraid. Because the monsters will never win. No matter how scary they are, there will be someone right here with me. 
Maryland's best high school football team space off in the state championship finals. Live from Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Class 2A, Middletown takes on Potomac. Tonight at 7 on the CW Baltimore. I can watch television all evening. Do you remember a time when you could turn on your TV and leave it on one channel all day long? Oh boy, I miss those days. <laughs> we do too. Ah, that makes me feel better. Featuring classic shows from the 50s through the 90s. That sounds wonderful. You never need to change your channel again. Get your hands away from that time. Antenna TV. TV how it was meant to be. Now watch Antenna TV over the air for free on channel 54.2. And we're back at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium here in Annapolis as uh, we have just completed the state 1A championship. And you just saw it, Catoctin, behind a talented group of players, including Carson Sicari, our player of the game, have shocked the world and defeated Dunbar 31-8. to We kept making the point throughout the evening, guys, that Dunbar has been here so many times. It's not... An unknown thing for them to win a state championship. Yeah, they want to add to it. They want to put more trophies in the trophy case. But for Catoctin, it seemed like do or die. I it, mean, they're it, not here every year. You, you know, know? I, I, I can't, I can't say it, you know, enough that uh, when you have an opportunity, okay, and they haven't been here in 10 years to get back to the stage, and against one of their arch nemesis, the big bullies of 1A football. And you get this opportunity to come out here and flex and show your skill set. 41 points on Fort Hill said enough about what we should have expected. Yeah. But it's still shocking, even when we saw this game, how they came out and really, really attacked this Dunbar team. And, and you know, there's a, there's a saying in sports, and we hear it all the time. You can handicap all you want. You can break it down. You can try to predict what's going to happen. But, Doug, the saying is you still got to play the game. And We're, all the experts said Dunbar's going to win this thing, and Catoctin <laughs> just said, guess what, right? Well, you know, you get a team like that one. That's why I was, you know, before the whole thing said, you know what? I just think this group's a team of destiny. It reminds me a great bit when I started first covering them of a team that we had when we played Allegheny. Allegheny had averaged 50 points a game. They were the best team ever to play in the state of Maryland. And I got a little old ragtag. It was our first time 1985. But there were, I told them before we went on the field, I knew that there was 74 people who believed we could win. Nobody else. But of the 74, the important part that 38 of them were wearing uniforms. So let's just go out there and play out Allegheny is hard as long as we can and you know everything happened to work right and you don't win state championships you just don't lose them. Yeah, that's Allegheny a good point. lost that to us Dunbar lost that to Catoctin. Well let's take a look at some highlights then from this state 1A championship as we mentioned it was all Catoctin and it started early. It started early. It started on the defensive ball with them. You see a fumble right here on one of the first series of the game and they turn around and put three points on the board and Look, the level of intensity that was established there. The next drive, they get an opportunity. And that's Sakari right you there. You see Sakari running the ball right up the middle. And you see that straight line, really intensity that they maintained the entire ball game. And then Dunbar trying to come back. He floated that pass. And guess who makes the interception? That's right, Sakari. So if you're a little guy out there and somebody says you're too small to play, yeah, <laughs> you tell them you forget I'm too small to play. So Kerry thinks he's 6'6", six, six, 260s when he's running that ball and up in there. Karan Moore there never could get on track, Doug. He no. never could. He was harassed all night. That defense was pretty relentless, and you can see right there they put points on the board. Wally, if we get a whole bunch of money somewhere, we should do a line. So we wouldn't see any of this stuff. All we would see would be the linemen, the offensive, defensive. <laughs> oh, yes. In the middle yes. of the screen, and you would have to have some little flash thing said you yes. won or lost. Dunbar did come back there with the touchdown and the two-point conversion, but that's all they were able to muster. And look at how Catoctin answers, offensively and defensively. Then Dunbar gives up the fumble. Catoctin comes up with it. And at that point, the game's all but over. Great effort all the way on every facet of the game for Cockney. Offense, defense, special teams, just really a, a great performance. And I know I said it before, but, you know, the success and failure of a team really is in the trenches. And, and those guys did it. I mean, look, this second half, I mean, we, we talked about the players and we talked about uh, we, we talked about Sakari coming in and having a great play. But the second half, look, that was the McElvain show. And that was uh, yeah. that was my man number eight, yeah. uh, Jay Baker. Sure. Okay, that was their show in the second half with defense pretty much 
took Dunbar out of the game. They lived in the backfield, made big plays. We saw Cook almost have an interception out there, you know, on a lot of the screen passes they were throwing out on the outside. So just great game planning, great anticipation, and just a great team football effort. I just love these scenes. <laughs> I just love to see that joy, that unbridled joy. It really doesn't really matter to me which team even wins. I just like to see that happen. Doug, you take a group of teenage boys, it's kind of like herding cats sometimes <laughs> to get them all moving in the same direction. And then you've done it five times. When you get them across that finish line, it kind of all makes it worth it, doesn't it? It really is. And you said earlier, Bruce, it's a thrill and the elation of winning it. And when you lose it, it's just that dejection. But the beautiful thing about it is you build family relationship. You build men that last a lifetime. Something special. All right, what we're going to do here, uh, we coming up at 6.30, we're going to have our special, our high school sports special that covers a lot of ground, and that will link us uh, between now and the kickoff of the 2A game. We're going to take a break right here, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about the game coming up. So stick around, everybody. You're a Ravens fan through and through. And now's your chance to show your pride in a big way. Get the M&T Bank Ravens debit card of your choice and limited edition Bluetooth speaker with any new M&T personal checking account. Rush to any M&T Bank branch today. Will you be boys? I need to get rid of some hair. <laughs> You're going to look so good. today welcome back to navy marine corps memorial stadium you're looking at the campus of the u.s naval academy not far from where we stand right now as we've just seen the Catoctin Cougars defeat Dunbar 31 to 8 joining us is our man on the sidelines up here getting warm Mike Popovic Wally and Coach and I have pretty much digested this thing uh, ad infinitum. What can you add? What did you see out there today? Well, I saw a Catoctin, Tim. You guys talked about it, that certainly coming off that four-hit loss last year, they were motivated. They had something in mind that they wanted to come back stronger this year. And they had a championship game in that semifinal, essentially, Bruce. They won that game. They had another game to get ready for the actual championship game, as I talked about on the field against Dunbar, for them to come out the way that they did uh, against Dunbar. I understand Dunbar. Dunbar only had five guys right. from the previous championship team in 17, but still impressive for Catoctin to come out, take advantage of the opportunities given to them. And you're right, you know, Dunbar made some mistakes in that game, but Catoctin also played very, very well. We saw that 41 to nothing score them over Fort Hill, and Fort Hill, everybody knows about. They're supposed to be in this game, and I said, how could that be? They answered that question tonight. No, they absolutely did. And I'm sure they had a little chip on their shoulder, too, that, yes, they, they've heard about Fort Hill, I'm sure, a ton out Western Maryland. But they said, hey, we're a pretty darn good program, too. And they won it 10 years ago. And obviously, 10 years later, they've come back with a head coach here 29 years, Bruce. Yeah. You know, talks about stability. I, I threw it down to you this way several times. Nothing fancy. It's not like they were out there breaking ankles or trying to do misdirections or anything. They were just running the football. Right. No, absolutely right. A couple of different formations, but yes, they ran the football effectively. They had a nice passing game to complement that, and that was the difference, as I talked about with Fort Hill. They had a quarterback, a doctor did, who could throw the ball down the field, and he threw some money balls and did a great job. Wally, uh, you, you were being an offensive lineman. You love to see them run the football, but Mike just made an excellent point. They ran the ball well until they had to throw it, and then they threw it well exactly and look when you have a potent running attack like we saw tonight uh, it, it made them play a different style of defense okay you bring six guys in the box and we talked about that when you have that many guys in the box that means you have man coverage 
on the outside. And a guy like Mike here playing quarterback, okay, that's what you want out there. We're going to take advantage of man coverage all the time, and they made big plays in the passing game as well. Let's bring in Coach Doug Duvall now. Coach, you uh, you won five state championships. We have got the uh, the fourth uh, of our state championships coming up here, the two-way between Middletown and uh, and uh, I, Potomac is, is also in the game. What should we look for in this game? I think you're going to see a very similar in a in a sense a very similar game again middletown's got this kid who's a gunslinger i mean he throws the ball all over the place poffenberger potomac is going to be big fast strong they've got three kids right now playing at maryland they've got a a, a player this year that already signed at Maryland. They've got four other kids that are playing Division Two, So they're loaded with talent. Uh, and Ronnie Crumbs worked on these guys. That they're going to be very good. So this should be a great game to watch. Well, and it reminds me of this earlier game in that you've got a team that makes it here a lot in Middletown, just like Dunbar did. And then you've got a team in Potomac that doesn't get here quite as often. And I love that part of the matchup. Well, Potomac doesn't get here because they've got to really play in an awfully, awfully tough conference. You know, every game for them is tough. So when they do get here, they come ready to play. And they've been in the semifinals, I think, five out of the last six years. They just can't quite get here because they run into some buzzsaw somewhere like a Douglas or one of the teams down there that's really good. Also, I think one conclusion we can reach from this year's uh, this year's finals, it's been a banner year for Frederick County High School football. It has been, and they've put a lot of guys in. They've really performed well. And I just, you know, I think it's a, I think football in the whole state has gotten a lot better. You know, and, and uh, you know, it'll be exciting. They've got a quarterback, Reese Poffenberger from Middletown. He'll be fun to watch play. He's, 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 he's a gunslinger. We made the joke earlier, all you Madden fans, stay tuned because you're going to see some Madden coming up right yeah, you certainly will and it's same thing too Potomac's got a kid can really throw the ball I've done so many things I can't remember his name I know what he looks like on film yeah. but I can't recall his name right now but that's all right good we got a half hour we'll be just fine listen coming up we've got a special high school sports special that will link this game and the game coming up it is Middletown and Potomac and it does start at seven o'clock so stay tuned my colleague Morgan Adsit is going to have this for you we got some interesting things to show you on the show so stay right there we've got the second game coming up at seven so for Doug for Mike for Wally I'm Bruce Cunningham we'll talk again in about 30 minutes goodbye The 2019 NPSSAA Maryland High School Football Championships. Brought to you by your Baltimore area Toyota dealers, Wendy's, PBI Office Furniture, Lifebridge Health, and Value City Furniture.